Gosha. Hello. Gosha. And welcome to the Destiny Community Podcast, episode number 104. Episode ASMR. ASMR? Yeah, ASMR. Oh, ASMR. ASMR I thought you said Escobar. I thought you, I thought you, I thought you said Escobar. Yeah, Pablo. Like Pablo. Pablo. <laughs> Pablo Escobar. The episode about Pablo Escobar. I wasn't ready for that much cocaine, but here we go. Yeah, yeah with the time for a deep dive, Escobar guys. Podcast. Here we go. Talk about my past, as in. Uh, so yeah. Hope Bear will be joining us later. Yep. Uh, and Bungie. With, with the Bungie raid team. That's right. So that's going to happen in hour two. So hour one, yeah. we're going to talk about Pope behind his back in hour two. Yeah. And Nutty Buddies. Pope will respond. Nutter Butters. What is it they have? A... And Nutty Buddies. Is it Nutty <laughs> Buddies or Nutter Butters? N- Nutty Buddy. That's what it is? Okay. I don't know. It's been a long time, man. I was a kid when I had those. <laughs> <laughs> Briar's hoarding them. <laughs> I just found it on my computer. I don't even know how I got there. <laughs> Suspicious Nutter Butter. Nutty Buddy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Who has been not eating Nutty Buddies in my office? Ah, recipe for disaster right there. <laughs> so, what's going on in the Destiny world, guys? Stuff. Oh, boy. Things and stuff. What, what hasn't Things. been going on? We got a dungeon. A dungeon got happened a in dungeon. Destiny. Dungeon. Like an actual, and they call it a dungeon, too. Oh, thank it's God. Not, it's an actual it's dungeon. It's called the Shattered Throne Dungeon. Yes, and it's phenomenal. Uh, did you guys, it is, everybody do it and complete it? I didn't do it yet. Yes. Casual, Briar. Jesus. Um, Raising my hand. <laughs> what? What did you think uh, yeah. going in and experiencing the dungeon? Can, can you describe it real quick? Like, for those of us uh, who haven't run it. It's very dark. It is dark, yeah. It's very taken. <laughs> Lots of taken. Um, so when I first got in there, you, you go in and there's symbols, like the symbols that are in the raid. And I was just like, Oh no. <laughs> oh no. I wrote every single one down because I was like, what if Riven just appears and instead of eyes, she's got symbols and we have to shoot them. Oh, this so I was terrifying. I was <laughs> that, exactly. I was terrified. But it was, uh, it's, I think the first time it took us about an hour 40 because I was playing with people that were 540 and low. Ooh, Ooh, yikes. It's a 590. It's a 580. Then, yes. What? We got to the 590 part and I was like, guys. Um, you have to swap you out for some we big may boys. To- <laughs> <laughs> this might be a little difficult for you. Yeah. What's amazing is this you is have this to pull content. Up your papers for this yeah, one. This is content <laughs> yeah. that is technically after the raid. So like. You do the raid, it's more, raid yeah. level, and then this is a like a a hard uh, three man mini raid essentially. Right, it's got yeah. like raid like encounters too, yeah. right? Uh-huh. It does. Can, can you guys describe the first one? I don't want to do too spoilery for people who haven't actually gotten a chance to do it. But like, what kind of raid encounter are we talking here? And you can be pretty. So similar. the first part is like I said, you see the symbols around, so yeah. one will light up. And that kind of tells you the symbol that you need to go and find. Um, so you're walking around this taken kind of throne world and you are looking for these symbols. And when you find the right symbol, there's going to be like a protector of that symbol. Uh, you have to kill him and then it shows you another symbol that then you have to go around and find the same symbol. So you're doing that for the first part. You're kind of just yeah. looking around at symbols and trying to match them and kill the guys and hopefully they don't kill you yeah. because they hurt And you. if you haven't looked at Reddit, you'll stumble upon like a relic and be like, there's a relic here. I wonder what this does. Huh, interesting. Yeah. And then it, it has nothing to do with the encounter until later, <laughs> which is awesome. Later. So yeah. secrets. So you find secrets, secrets in the freaking dungeon room while you're also doing it. It's so cool. Yeah. Yeah, uh, the the scope of it feels like a bigger Crota's End. <laughs> like you take it's Crota's End, really, like, you double it. That's honestly, what it feels like. It, the scope and the size. Is it like to the raid lair size stuff? Yes. Oh, it's it's crazy. It's gotten to the the point with Forsaken stuff that's being shown, and I'm like, how did you guys afford to make this? This place is huge and this was just this is just like a little extra thing for us to do it's just like an extra dungeon it's not a raid right it's how are the rewards an activity fantastic there's power oh yeah there's there's tiered rewards as you progress so you get through like the first part second part and then the third part each one of those has a drop like a raid nice oh so there's three like major encounters yeah right isn't there there's that the first one with the symbols yeah and then there's the ogre very dark souls-esque Right. When you're walking on the... Yep. And the slow room with the... Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, there's a lot of encounters to this. And then there's the then there's the ogre. This is definitely my oh. new motion for thrall. And then there's the <laughs> <laughs> And then there's the then there's the the part that you get to that was in a trailer and we were wondering when we were going to see that part. Right. With the with the knights and the wizard. Yes, yeah, yeah. Well, if the, there's the ogre yeah. thing though after the the whoosh, whoosh part. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, the, <laughs> the, the scratchy what scratch. What would you guys recommend for light levels going in? Like a full fire team. It depends on well, your aptitude for PV. So if you are like, if you enjoy a really difficult challenge, go in there at like 550, 560, and you'll have a challenge. Like, yeah. yeah. Really? It's that hard. Oh, I mean, the end goes up to 590. The end is 590. Yeah. Yeah. The end is high, higher than the raid. Yeah. The, that's so. like, the, it technically is content that's stepped after the raid. That's what's really interesting about this. Yeah. yeah. So like, that's crazy. Yeah. That's amazing. And the end part is, you know, those it, you've been to the Ascendant world and fought those knights before. Yeah. Yeah. So like imagine being in a small area with three of those knights. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Yeah. A very, very small area with also a wizard shooting you and also thrall at no scions yeah. spawning. What is the loot? Is it raid loot or is it Dreaming City loot? What, what kind of loot does it give out? Is it? Dreaming I think it's Dreaming City loot. City loot. Yeah. Yeah. It's dreaming okay. city. So high level dreaming city. Yeah, powerful engram, dreaming city level loot. Um, but then at the end of it, you get the quest to um, to go find the wish ender, the the exotic mm -hmm. bow, which is cool. Right. Yeah. Oh, you know what's really so a really cool touch. I don't. Is this too spoilery about the statue with the bow? You know what? If you here's the thing. If you listen to this mm -hmm. podcast, this is up to date yeah. information about Forsaken. Right. So you might want to put this so, on pause so and come just, back. Let's just have at. Yeah, we should just jump in, honestly. There's a really cool just thing that doesn't affect gameplay or anything, but it's just a really cool touch where when you first visit the statue, she's got quivers on her back and she's holding a bow. And then when you do all of the stuff to get the wish ender and you acquire the wish ender and you go and see her again, she's not holding the bow. So I thought oh, that was really awesome. cool. That's interesting. Yeah. I thought that was really cool. To see so that now you the have the bow. That's cool. Yeah. I did see the bow itself has a statue on it. Yes. And then, like the statue lights up or the sword on the statue lights up as it charges. Yes. The, okay. Yep. This bow has to be one of the best looking mm -hmm. exotics ever. Yeah. yeah. It's incredible. And, guys, and you like the it? ornament. Okay. The bow is trash. <laughs> but <laughs> it does extra damage to take it. But <laughs> it's it has been confirmed that it is bugged. Yes. So oh, on is. fast moving targets, it's not doing as much damage as it should be doing. Okay. So like, I don't know if that's going to make it any better. We'll have yeah. to see when it's actually fixed and then try it again. But it's just, it has a really slow draw time. Yeah. That's the complaint you, I keep hearing. Is it you just headshot forever. people and they just run away <laughs> because you can't do a quick follow up. It's, that's you know, in the crucible though, right? Yeah. Right, in the crucible. But even then in PVE, it's like you're taking so long to draw that thing back that are you really going to use it? And it's, I might as well use one of the other bows that has Archer's Tempo and Rampage and Yeah, Arsenic stuff. Bite's pretty hard to beat when it comes to bows. It's really yeah. good. Yeah. The, um, the draw time is the complaint I keep hearing. And like some yeah. people were really looking forward to having kind of like that true sight or the, the wall hack ability. But it seems like you got to be aiming down sight to get yep. it. And mm -hmm. the Guardian's like, move out of the way so fast that you, it's very easy to lose track of guardians unless you got like a long hallway yeah it's situational honestly i mean it's a really cool effect mm -hmm. also it's the only way that you can shoot the eggs around the dreaming city so you know those eggs that like yeah. are immune yeah that's officially the way yeah. that you um you crack them is with the wish ender but and you get dreaming city gear from those yeah, you get a drop yeah. apparently there's a triumph i believe if you crack all the eggs Make a oh. make an omelet. And some of them are <laughs> hidden, right? There's like one yes. that's hidden in the raid that we know about. Yeah, yeah. they're definitely hidden, uh, which is an there, there's, there's at least one in each ascendant challenge too. So yeah. we're gonna oh. have to wait for those to come back around. Is this like a them. next level Easter egg? Hmm? Eggs yes. within eggs. Easter egg. Yes. <laughs> egg. It's not even Easter. But yeah, you're right. <laughs> okay. Um, the bow. It's definitely a little bit of a miss. Like. It looks mm -hmm. like a heavy bow. And this thing, like, when yeah. you see it in your character, it's the size of your guardian. <laughs> Wait, yeah. You know, Does it go in your energy slot? No, it goes in your kinetic. No, it's a kinetic. Yeah. Kinetic. It looks okay. like one of the bows it, like that you would get in Dark Souls. That would be, like, this massive bow that, like, the knights would be using yeah. to just one-shot you or something. Like a long bow. Yeah. 
So I kind of wish that they would have like doubled down on and put in like the heavy slot and just made it like some insane heavy bow that that would yeah. be that would actually be very cool yeah. to have a heavy bow where you could just walk go actually one shot headshot people. Yeah, that charge that would time would really make cool. sense then, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's the thing. It's, I'm not finding any benefit of having such a long draw time. It's it doesn't do more damage. You know, arsenic bite currently is doing a lot more damage mm -hmm. than this bow. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm just I don't feel like I'm getting a payoff for having this very slow draw yeah. methodical because you have to give up. You have to give up. Whisper, you have to give up uh, Sleeper, you have to give up Ace of Spades. Right. Like there's so many top tier exotics that take up that that you're giving up for the Wish Ender, which has a very situational perk of being able to see through walls. So I. Right. And even when you see him come around the corner, you can't kill him because you had shot him and they just run away. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's not like you can be in your in their face with the bow because it's such yeah. a slow play style with that bow. So you have to be at a distance mm -hmm. and then they just run away. Yep. So I like, Could you possibly like use it? And then switch quickly to a hand cannon or something. Is that up? You you can. It's just if you're using it to look through through walls and you're hitting them as soon as they peek the wall, they're just gonna run back behind. Right next to the wall. Yeah. So that yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. I'd say um, one thing that. Go ahead. I was just gonna say for PvP, I don't think this thing is gonna become any kind of like top contender, even if they were to fix the draw time. But for PV, but it should. I, I know it should, right? It's exotic. For PVE, it is um, it does extra damage to take in and it's pretty satisfying. I mean, you can see like the extra stuff crit with it or, or the extra hits because of the piercing. You can like pierce a line of enemies right down and get yeah. crits and all that and get exit damage. And if they're taken, like I said, you get an extra bonus on there. So that's pretty cool, even with it being bugged right now. And you can obviously yeah. you can ADS and then see. Oh, there's a whole bunch of enemies around here. I'm just, you know, can shoot this. So for and it, it's over penetrates too. So yes. like if you're a group of enemies, you could hit two or that's possibly. what I'm saying. You, know, or you can like kill I will a line. say what I'm what I'm pretty disappointed about with that is it doesn't go through the phalanx's shield. Yeah. If it went uh, through the phalanx's shield, I'd be like, be cool. okay, now now that like really gives me a reason to use it exactly. because I can protect my team and shoot those down before they boop everybody. Yep. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that would be cool. Yeah, I'm kind of disappointed that it's kinetic. I I wanted to have like a flavor, like void energy or something, so you could pop mm -hmm. a void shield with it as well. But that'd be cool. Yeah. So if you do want the wish ender after this glowing review, yes, <laughs> <laughs> you gotta get it quick, beautiful. or you gotta wait three weeks to get it, right? Yeah, it goes away at recent. Yeah, the it was revealed yeah. today in the in the uh, bunch of weekly update that what we're seeing the the changes in the Dreaming City are on a three week cycle. So at next Tuesday on reset, it's going to reset to what it was like year, week one before anybody did the raid, and it'll just kind of cycle through this. So any activity or any changes are going to be reset. Yeah. So I, I assume that that is with the blind well as well. I'm you guys know right? I would assume so, yeah. Is there like a secret fifth level for the blind well this week? Anybody find out uh, anything like that? All I know is the, the like... I know of is the fourth level. Yeah. Yeah. I'm kind of disappointed in that. I wanted to see like a fifth level get unlocked that has like unique loot that potentially could be dropped just from the well. That would be really cool. I, maybe they can add stuff like that because that, that would be something that would be really, really cool. Yeah. But now we're on an infinite three-week cycle, which apparently is all being orchestrated by Savathun. And Savathun is growing stronger with every cycle that we Big do. Sav? Hmm. <laughs> So we're having to do this cycle to keep the Dreaming City, because if we don't kill all of the corruption in the Dreaming City, we lose the Dreaming City. But by doing it, we're making Savathun stronger. Wow. So basically, when we fight Savathun, if that ever happens, we are screwed. Have you got a DM going with Bife right now? I watched a video. <laughs> <laughs> I watched a Bife video. Let's just say a video was I got to say, Bife and Myelin have been my go-to, because the lore that's going on right now is... For the first time in Destiny that I can remember, it's like right in your face. Yeah. But yeah. I still want to know more. I want I want the details. And these guys making the videos right now that you know they're doing the deep dive into the lore yeah. has been really fascinating right it's now. So good, right? It's been great. Cause yeah, we know little bits and pieces about like uh Inkaru and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But then finding out more information about who is this being and why are they here and how do they get here? It's it's really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It's so cool. Uh, Mylan put out than one ever, I want to know more. Mylan put out one, I think it was today, it might have been yesterday, about 
uh, how the queen became awoken and like the yeah, it was really good. It was really interesting. I'm gonna have to watch that. That sounds awesome. It's a good watch. It's a good watch. Yeah. Uh, before we move on to other things that happen in Destiny, uh, the quest for the Wish Ender. Once you complete that Shattered Throne, that is not. Um, that's not it for the Wish Ender. You got. Make sure you talk to the statue. Yes. For the love of God. Talk to the statue if you <laughs> go through. If you go through this, <laughs> especially if you're under light level and you work hard to get to that point, <laughs> do not forget to talk to the statue. Uh, talk to the statue. That exactly. begins the quest for the Wish Ender. And then you have to go jump through some hoops. You do some questing. And then ultimately you come back to the Shattered Throne and do some secret stuff in there. Which we don't really need to reveal what those secrets are uh, on this podcast. But it's really cool that you have to actually go back it into butt it. stuff? There's some butt stuff in there. <laughs> there's some balls. All right. A, this, is the, this is the DLC of balls. Yeah, there's a lot of ball, <laughs> ball touching that you have to do in it. Yeah. Um, it's cool. I mean, I, I love quests like that. Like th this is kind of what they did with um, Whisper, with the Whisper quest where you got the Whisper and then you had to go back in to do stuff to get the ship and also get the the masterwork and all that. Um, so maybe in the future they could evolve it further where if Wish Ender got masterwork, yeah. what if the, the masterwork for Wish Ender was <gasps> draw time got decreased? Mm. And Archer's Tempo. Yeah. Archer's tempo and like draw time and maybe had some sort of explosive thing happen with the Taken. Like that would be really yeah, just cool. Yeah, add all of the bow perks onto Wish Ender for its cast. Yeah, it's just That's what I want. a god roll bow cocktail. I like it. <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> yeah, in that. So they've, they've taken that aspect of what they did with Whisper and kind of doubled down to make it like a secret in that dungeon which is awesome. Like, I love stuff like that. I want to see them further go down that road and just do more of that. Like, I, I'm, I'm really hoping this isn't the only dungeon that we're going to see for a while. Like, I want them to continue to release dungeons in this, like, maybe something yeah. for the, um, the Black Armory and, like, you know? Yeah, if we could get, diff like, new dungeons every DLC, that would be amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's great because then we get a raid layer and a dungeon. It's it's really good and it's beautiful. It serves a different like purpose than a raid, right? Yes. Like you don't need three guys to do it. You don't need a yeah. six man fire team. It's it's a different purpose. Uh, there's another thing too. There's actually triumphs. Uh, you know, I didn't check this. I didn't verify it. Chat told me this, so you know, could be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I looked at it. I can... There's triumphs. I believe there's triumphs in there that for soloing it and also soloing it with no deaths, as well. Yes. Oh. So again, it's hard content My. for PVE that they also designed to be one, two, three people instead of a full six man raid that is required to yep. to do that end level content. So it, Bungie realizes that there's like this divide right now in PVE of like people who only solo stuff or only have like one or two friends that play and don't do anything else. And then, um, you know, communities being grown from raiding together and like. They realize that they need to put some stuff in there for the solo players. And this is a fantastic solution for that. I mean, you're not going to get the raid gear. You're not going to get raid weapons. But you're going to get, like, a great experience from this dungeon. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's really cool. Um, What else? Oh, the Malfeasance quest hit as well this week. Oh, boy. Uh, that is a weird quest. It starts off with you just with RNG, basically. You got to get RNG on top of RNG, and then there's like some more RNG. Yeah. Right? You got to get lucky enough to get a certain boss as a prime evil in Gambit, and then you got to win that. You got to kill it. So the, you can't lose that. The meatball. Is it round or match? I think it's just the round, right? It's the round. You yeah. just have to be. Yeah. I think there's a chance of it being the next round, but I've also seen it not happen the next round, and people would be devastated. <laughs> So wait, wait, no, the primeval just it randomly picks the primeval, right? Yeah. Yeah, per round. Yeah. And you have to defeat that primeval. If you get the, the space meatball, you have to defeat the meatball, and then you get the quest for Malfeasance. Yeah. Yeah, you don't have to win the match. You just have to beat it. Well, you have to win that round, though. If you're going to beat the... You have to the, win the round, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Primeval, you have to beat You got to win the round, but you don't have to actually beat the team officially. Right. For the, you know, not for the match, but you got to beat them for that round. For that round, yeah. And then it Some should drop the quest. Some people got it in their first match. Some people played for like 15 hours and still haven't seen it. <laughs> I played a decent yeah, amount so last night and haven't seen it. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. Uh, yeah, I played a little bit today, but I didn't see it. Uh, but I'm not, I'm not in a super rush to get this one either because I'm not hearing great things about this gun either. Yeah. <laughs> so I've heard. So I've heard. I have heard mixed things. There's some people that really love the feel of the hand cannon because it's mm -hmm. super accurate, 
like zero recoil at all, just stays in one spot, looks really great. Um, some people are using it with um, the pants, the warlock pants that reload your gun. Mm. And they're just like sitting in there and just like shooting boss because it allows you to just put those pouts into it that does extra damage to Taken. So some people are in love with the gun. Other people are like, again, why would I give up Whisper or Sleeper for... It's the yeah. problem, right? That is always the problem when you have like super powerful weapons like yeah. that. It's like, yeah. Um, I mean, it looks amazing. I think it's one of the best designed hand cannons they've ever made, and they've made some real good ones. Like, it looks absolutely gorgeous. Oh, it's beautiful. And the perk is cool. I don't love the 100... I know this is not a super popular opinion, especially right now. I don't love the 180 rate of fire hand cannons in general. I don't like the recoil pattern, and they just kind of feel weird to me. It has no recoil pad. It doesn't even move. I, just the way the gun, like, bucks instead of, like, fling up like this, it kind of, like... Doesn't even do anything. It goes back. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? It doesn't do that at all? <laughs> It's um, the gun basically it just doesn't move. Which is it's pretty crazy to watch that recoil. Jeez. And then the perk on it is what the fifth shot that lands causes a large explosion. Interesting, yeah. Yeah, you can you can like put your bullets into the enemies and then the next the fifth shot explodes it and does all the damage to it. Hmm. And does extra damage to taken. That's really cool. All right, it does seem like you know, you got Luna's howl, which is still a challenge for some people to go after, but the perk on Luna's Howls is technically better, and that's a legendary gun than this exotic, yeah. right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that could be a problem. You could run both. That's true. <laughs> you could. Yeah. You could double up on it. Yeah. Do you think the recoil actually might be bugged since it's not moving? No, I think that's... You think it was just straight just up intended it that it was not going to move? It was gonna, just going to stay there? I think so. Yeah. Interesting. They've never done a gun like that before with zero recoil. It's just, just doesn't move. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would like it. I want it. I want it too. I spent a, a fair amount of time in Gambit yesterday. Didn't have it spawn once. Do you think they're going to adjust the spawn rate after time? Like maybe they're like measuring in how many meatballs show up into the uh, the Destiny universe. Maybe. Maybe. I, I gotta say, I'm not in love with this mechanic for getting this gun. This is the second gun that you've had to do something weird in Gambit for mm -hmm. the first, or not the first curse. Why do I always call it the first curse? Ace of Spades being mm -hmm. the first one, and it it adjusts the way that players are playing the playlist. And like, I really just want to play Gambit, right? Like, I'm mm -hmm. really into this game mode, but it's kind of like you've got these like players who aren't doing any motes at all because they want to get their Ace of Spades. Now they kind of fix that. Now, my feasance is in there. It's like it's kind of weird when they they force players to play a little differently than just trying to win. Although the malfeasance, at least you're still trying to win. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, sure. you're trying to burn your prime evil. Yeah, which is you know how you win. I I think the problem right now is that Gambit is like just flooded with sleeper simulant, and if you don't want to shoot or be shot with sleeper simulant, then it can be it can be a little bit of a salty experience. So. The first day I went in, I wasn't really wanting to adopt the sleeper simulant, and I started getting a little salty. I was like, I can't play this anymore. I have to stop. Then the next day I came in, and I was like, okay, I'm equipping the sleeper and saying, screw it. You're going to get sleepered or I'm going to get sleepered. I don't care at this point. I'm going <laughs> to see if the, I'm, I want this damn meatball to show up. I'm going to do it. And I had a better time, but still, like after a while, you get sleepered enough, you kind of you kind of get sick of that game mode. Yeah, it just makes it less satisfying rather than putting on like, you know, a queen breaker and a sniper, you know, something fun where you could go in and you pull off these really awesome shots and you feel great about it. You're like, oh, look, I sleep with someone. It was so hard. Oh, yeah. oh my God, I was aiming at your crotch and I got a headshot. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have been going in with like a double sniper rifle loadout. I use the yeah, uh, crucible sniper and I use the uh, the whisper. Uh -huh. I, I do uh -huh. like that a lot. And have you guys gotten the new map in Gambit? Yes, the cathedral. Where there's it's it's in the Dreaming City. Yeah, and there's like these. I don't know if they're stained glass windows, but you can basically see out of them. So you can see if somebody's like aiming a sleeper around because it's it's like super noticeable. It's this big red light yeah. that like it's hard to miss. So it's kind of fun to kind of just dance in front of that door, watch them like hit the hit the glass with a sleeper. And then pop out and try and snipe them while they're charging it for the next one. Nice, yeah. I like that quite a bit. 
And uh, if you're really tired of Sleeper, use the new Arc Strider Super and just bounce it back at them and laugh. Oh, that's cool. Have you, you been it's playing a lot with that? Favorite, uh, it's my favorite subclass yeah. now at this point. And my, my only goal in life is to reflect things back of people. Mm. Your hammers, your golden guns, your sleepers. It's all I want to do. I just want to shoot. Titans can do them. that with that new those new boots, right? Yeah, you have to slide. Yeah. The slidey boots. Does that the work against the sleeper? Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. Well, yeah. It reflects everything, right? Yeah. yeah. That'd be good. Do you have the slidey boots? <laughs> I have the slidey boots. You got them? <laughs> Put I a got them. gambit and just slide I, everybody. Dude, just montage slide sleeper reflection. <laughs> <laughs> that would be lit. Yeah. I actually got lucky. I got another exotic today. Oh, you got the hunter exotic that gives you extra throwing knife charge. Oh, Ophidia Space? Yeah. You didn't have that yet? No. No, that was Warmind. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was pretty unimpressive, I gotta say. Oh, really? The double dodge one is new. Okay. Which is, okay. works somewhat similar a little yeah. on me. Hold up, hold up, Briar. It's so... Yeah. Last week was Solar. I jumped into the... Um, I, just, I jumped in the strikes when it was Brawler. And yeah. if you throw that chess piece on... And you rock way of a thousand cuts. You are a knife chucking god. Like I didn't okay. shoot any bullets. I just chucked knives. I got like 150 like kills. It. That sounds fun. It was amazing. Okay. Like I did it in the dreaming in the in the well, and I was not impressed. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. So brawler, when you have brawler with the times three cooldown, but playing with fire times three, you were literally chucking knives like this. Just. Yeah, chugging them, chugging them, chugging them. And as long as you get a nice. kill, it resets that that timer. And with Brawler yeah. and Solar, it would it like stacked, so you can literally just chuck, 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 chuck. You get to a boss, chuck, 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 chuck. It was incredible, honestly. It was some of the most fun I've had in a strike in a long time. Which is literally right, chugging I'm gonna have knives. to watch for that combo to come back. Oh, it was so good. You become Genji, man. It's awesome. Yeah, and the knives do so much damage mm -hmm. too. So yeah, it's actually a viable thing. You're not just running around throwing potatoes at people. I it's love that subclass. That subclass is my new favorite. Yeah, and when you, like, it, I like it in PvP and PVE. Exactly. I like the yeah. knives. I like the super. I like I like everything about it. Really. Yeah. yeah, and then when you're in the middle of chucking knives constantly, and you're like, "Oh, it's a big dude," and I got my super six knives that explode, <laughs> 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 and a cool animation. You know, when it, <laughs> When it initially dropped, I thought it was the one that recharges your super, like on on hits for the six knives, mm. and I was really excited. And then I read the description, I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get the um, the blades or knives of whatever it is of Galanor. I want that. Yeah, the gloves. What's it's pretty crazy. Oh, I want it so is that bad. the one that recharges your super? Yes, for your yes. thousand cuts. Okay, that's the, okay. It's like the um, Aphidia. I uh, know the uh, yeah. It recharges on hits and kills. So. Like, you get super back if you get hits. You get even more super back if you get kills with it, which sounds incredible. I want those gloves so bad, man. Yeah, I want those yeah. too. Yeah, shards and of And some new exotic weapons would be cool. Mm hmm. <laughs> yeah. So there's they are, not that many. No, there's not. They are going to up the many. drop rate, it sounds like, of the, or they're going to give a higher percentage chance of getting new exotics. Yes. Uh, coming to a Destiny game near you. They mentioned yes. that in the weekly update this week. So not an increased drop rate of stuff happening, but no. when one does drop, you can maybe get a little more excited because it's going to be more likely that it's a new one that you don't have. Yeah, right. Until somebody on Reddit's like, this is my fifth Ace of Spades. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, that's been happening. Over. A lot of people have been getting uh, uh, Lord of Wolves like dropping like yeah? consistently. Yeah. yeah. So that you get it once, and then all of a sudden it'll start. It's like it, I got. You know, it's, I'm sure it's RNG, but. Yeah, Man. I got my chaperone waiting for me. I haven't pulled it because I know it's going to be in my loot pool. Just if I leave pull it. it. Leave it in the yeah. loot pool yeah. forever. Yeah. Yeah, I had to pull mine for our first raid because it was my highest kinetic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I yanked it for the for that. But I was just sitting there watching it go. You know, it started off in the 520s, 530s, <laughs> yeah. five. 39. <laughs> now we just stop in by Amanda. Hey, what's the light level? All right, hmm. we're going to the raid. Now or never. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's good that they're doing that. I mean, I don't want the I don't want the feeling of exotics being rare to go away, but I do think if you get like another jade rabbit, like lame, right? That you you should have higher lame. chances yeah. of getting the new stuff if you do see when those exotics drop. You know what I'd like to see them implement is like um 
a time system where like at the beginning of a DLC, everything's super rare, but as you get toward like the middle and the end of the DLC, like things start dropping a little more frequently so that like coming into a brand new DLC, like you're, you're kind of starting from, okay, you know, like now I'm looking forward to the new stuff. Mm-hmm. That'd be nice. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, they're kind of talking about that with catch-up mechanics in um, the Iron Banner for the TWAB, and, like, I could definitely see them yeah. expanding that overall to RNG things that are really rare. So, like, if yeah. they know that things are going to move on and crest over to the next DLC, and maybe some windows are going to become impossible, it would be nice if they increase some of those drop rates for people who are just jumping in. Yeah. Some catch-up yeah, mechanics. Over time. Like, at, the, at first, you know, it's also rare, and, yeah, you know, if, if you got it, you're lucky, and... You know, a month in, it gets a little less rare, and then three. You know what? We got we got a DLC coming out once every quarter this year. Yeah. Yeah. When did you get your first exotic when you played uh, Destiny One? It was pretty quick, Ex- actually. Excluding I got it in the Zer. Crucible. Oh, really? I got yeah. I got a, I got the um, uh, Thunderlord, uh, and I didn't even know what exotics were, and I got the Thunderlord to drop at the end of a Crucible match. I think mine was fairly early, so I got hard light somewhat early from Crucible as well. Hmm. But I had Oof. no idea what it was. <laughs> I know. I was just like, what is this? An exotic? Supposed to be awesome. Let me use it. I hate it. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. Mine wasn't, I think, uh, it was Universal Remote, and it was the Raid Chest. It was the first one that, like, dropped. Mm. So really? it was kind of kind of rare for Great. me. Really? Yeah. The Thunderlord was an awesome first exotic to get because... If you remember way back in Destiny 1, if you played Rumble and you got heavy, you mm-hmm. basically have heavy for the rest of the Rumble. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You were murdering people with that thing. Yeah. 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 Like, I like that thing was awesome. I like the feeling of exotics being like a oh my God moment. And I like the fact that they can drop from essentially Same. anywhere at this point, from a thrall to a end of a PvP match. So I like that. So I don't I don't want them to get rid of that. So I'm I'm glad that they're not just immediately being like, okay, you guys aren't getting enough exotics. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Let's definitely keep the excitement yeah, I, of the drop. I like this much better because they they said that their goals for exotics was they wanted when one to drop for you to be excited, but the fact that people were getting so many duplicates was making them less excited. So they just want to try and make sure you're less likely to get duplicates. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I, I think, think that's, that's definitely the the right way to go. They drop so infrequently that it'd be nice to get. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's something new. Exactly. Especially being able to print them out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Also, I think if it'd be nice if they put something in there as well. Like, let's say the higher light level you are, the more likely it was to give you a new exotic. Because right now, a new exotic or an exotic drop is like, oh, light gains, great. But once you get close to 600 right. and then you get a duplicate, it's literally going to be like, well, that sucks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, definitely. Yeah. So, uh, what else is going on? Malfeasance. Shadow the, the Dreaming City has like shadow balls everywhere. Yes. Dripping, <laughs> taking juices. It's really yeah. cool seeing them evolve that play space. <laughs> yeah. 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 I wonder if uh I wonder if that that'll be a theme that we see like moving forward, or if this was just a one time deal, the Dreaming City just kind of set I itself up so. for it. I hope so. I hope they stick with either just evolving the Dreaming City and keeping that thing going or adding end game locations frequently Mm -hmm. and having it be something that we evolve. Because I think it was was super cool that when the raid was finished, it started this whole thing. I think that that was amazing. I think that's a really, really cool way to get the whole community behind the raid being finished. You know, you can turn you, now that you know that's happening. You can turn into Worlds First and be like, "Oh, what are they, they going to unlock?" It's so exciting. Yeah, that's really cool. This is the first time that after a raid, I still feel like I want to level up my character and like kind of engage in like the milestones and the power leveling stuff. It, normally, after when a DLC drops or when the base game dropped, uh, I go hard. The raid hits. We finish the raid, and then I'm like, "Okay, I'm going to do whatever the fuck I want." whether it's crucible or you know like I, yeah. I have no some people like to see that number like hit like the max number like whether that be 400 or 300 or 200 whatever that is mm-hmm. i don't have that at all but i like now there is a significant reason for me to keep leveling up my character even though i've done the raid you know i want to do you know the the dungeon i want to do 
you know, blind well, it can be difficult at a low level. I want to do Iron Banner. I want to do, you know, like uh, Gambit, right? Is there's there's yeah. power level power matters in Gambit, and I think that's interesting. It's 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 a reason to keep playing or keep engaging with the the milestones and the the power rewards. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for me, yeah. I, I'm I'm looking to hit 600, and then beyond that, I'm looking to curate builds for specific things. Yeah, like yeah. your your gambit armor, your PvP armor, your yep. raid armor, your linear fusion rifle armor, your sniper. I ended armor. up doing that last, yesterday, and I felt like a scumbag for it. I was like, all right, shotgun scavenger, linear fusion rifle scavenger, and now I, I pick up a brick <laughs> and I get like five or six sleeper shots, and I'm like, this is disgusting. What the it's, hell, you know? Yeah, and it's crazy. But but that that like hunt to build things is incredibly exciting. And we finally have a back. Yeah. We had a year of it not existing essentially. And it, it, may, it does make you feel more powerful. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, d- different pieces of armor can make you feel significantly more powerful. Yeah. And that's great. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Every drop um, I get, it doesn't matter if it's power drop or not. I am yeah. looking at the perks. You're checking like, it. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. Um, we did have a certain Mara Sov. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's right. A lot of glitter on her. Where has she been exactly? Shaking it? <laughs> I want her shader. <laughs> she's, she got hotter. Maybe it's because she's in her own world, so she's like... <laughs> she, yeah, yeah. Make yeah. myself a little bit cuter, you know? Got some glitter on me. She had some adjustments. Her, her room is She had some work done? <laughs> she had some work done, honestly. <laughs> yeah. That's why she's been gone for so long. She's been yeah. healing up. <laughs> <laughs> I was surprised. I did not expect it, like to. So for those that don't know, once you do the Oracle offering this week, I, I don't know if it's tied to it being this week with the, the corruption or if it's you've done it three times. Or it's probably tied to this week being the corruption. You go do the Oracle offering. It opens up a portal to go meet with Marasov in person. Yeah, yeah it's a little concerning because you don't see the chest pop up. Yeah, I know. I'm like, where is this, where is this chest? Yeah. And and like I'm if like, you're. Oh. If you're oblivious to things like me and you're reading chat, just kind of wait, glance it over, waiting for the chest, because that that chest was on like a 15 second delay anyway. So I just kind of like, where's my chest? What's going on yeah, here? There's a and bright like, light in front of me. What portal the hell? In the distance? <laughs> I was surprised, man. You go through there. I mean, the, the her throne world is. Well, I get. I guess it's her. I, I don't know the lore of it. Like her her place that she's chilling at. Her space. Space place, yeah, it's great. Her space place is pretty yeah. amazing. Like they, it's classic <laughs> bungee with like an amazing skybox and super sweeping design and yeah. And you can get your seat of light, your third seat of light from her. Yes. If you haven't done the raid, you yeah. if you didn't so do the not raid, just tied to the raid. You can do your offering and you can get it like that. And you can just do tier ones to complete your offering bounty. So no. it's not super out of reach for people. no, no. But tier four right now though is super fun. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's, it's the really meatball, meatball again, right? Well, yeah. Yeah, it's the meatball. the meatball. It's a fun one. That thing dies so quick. I, dies less, so I quick. think maybe that's why I think it's fun. <laughs> 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 just blasting that thing. <laughs> yeah, it just falls on over into death. Yeah. <laughs> they remind me of uh, those things from Doom, like that big round monster from Doom. Yeah. It's very similar. Cacodemon. Yeah. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> yeah, those things are. Uh, um, yeah. Lots of people call it space anus. I'm just like. Space butthole, yeah. I don't know. Mm. That's pretty big for a butthole, man. It's pretty gross for a butthole. Your butthole <laughs> yeah. looks like. I know you said space anus. Does your butthole but... have teeth? Uh, I, question, <laughs> I question your hygiene, I think. <laughs> <laughs> we might have to have a. Yeah. Are you a front wiper or a back wiper? Because. <laughs> 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 Because it's like a round, you know, it it, it looks more yes. like a meatball to me, honestly. It looks like a meatball. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't eat that, obviously, because it looks disgusting. But it's the first thing. <laughs> it's the first thing that comes to my mind. It's something they would have served in Indiana Jones Tumble of Doom. Yeah. I wonder how many other times we're going to see the meatball show up. I don't know. This Is that the third occurrence of it? Yeah. yeah. Campaign, Gambit, and now um, Blendwell. Okay. Yeah. Are we just going to suddenly see the meatball show up like next to Spider? And be just, like, just randomly, he's going to have a public event. Just oh, gonna be like, sup guys? Public event meatball would <laughs> meatball. be awesome. Actually, that's the type of stuff that I wanted for like secrets, like a secret public event to show up that was rare. Yeah. In fact, I guess that's kind of how there is one on the kind of what Gambit is. Yeah, it's kind of <laughs> what Gambit is at this point, and I kind of wish 
that they had done maybe something similar for the Tangled Shore. There's one on the Dreaming City uh, that doesn't pop up that often, but it's like the three um, uh, Forsaken Captains that you got to kill and then keep their ether from like coming into the middle. You got to shoot all yep. their ether. And then if you if you do that, the heroic version spawns the mechanic or mechanist or whatever it is. One of the one of the barons. Yeah. Yeah. I guess it's not secret, but it feels pretty special the first time you see it. Yeah, Ether Harvest was in Tangled Shore also though. Does it spawn the mechanist in Tangled Shore? You know, I don't know, actually. I think is it the machinist that it spawns? I think it is the yeah. I think is so. It? I think so. Yeah, I think it spawns the machinist as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's probably it just doesn't happen as often. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You don't see it. You don't see that public event pop up that often. Yeah, this is one of the things I always wish they had done is like tie in certain rewards that are exclusive to these type of events. So when you see one, when you're going about your business, and you see that public event, you're like, oh, I might get the thing that I want because it's rare. It might you know happen if you yeah. do that. Yeah, yeah. There's you know like. What I- this is this is very off. Well, it's not off top. It's off topic. So, what I really want them to do because PC and Xbox does not have the Brood Queen strike, I would love it if they had the heroic adventure for the Mindbender, and then have the Brood Queen be a part of that because they are, you know, breeding. Brooding. Oh, they're brooding. Hmm. So I think that would just that would be really cool if she just showed up in the heroic version and then everyone gets to see her because her design is amazing and she splits herself into like a she's a hive and also a shadow. It's just it's really cool. So I think if she just like showed up and they do a little high five or awesome. something. And I want to play that strike. Yeah, you will. Really cool in one year. You get the lore about it. Too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you get the lore about it where they actually talk about the mind bender and it's really wow, cool. that's cool. Did we actually last week? Did we talk about the new strike that they add with the Dreaming City? Uh, I don't know Wait, if we did. I don't think we did. Yeah. yeah, we did. We did. Did we? Yeah, we did. Okay. Well, yeah. I hadn't played it at that time. I got to play it this week finally, and uh, once again, Bungie just doubling down on amazing content that they've been adding in this. It's insane. Yeah. It really is. Like yeah. from the Shattered Throne to like that strike, it, it just it keeps unfolding. I like how it keeps unfolding. It's like over time we're getting more content, right? So mm-hmm. every time I log in or at least every week, it's like there's more stuff. There's different stuff. Yes. And that's really fun. Yeah. You know? Like that, that that's how it felt during the Taken King. And to a to a certain extent, uh the what was it the Iron Lords? What, which one was that? Rise of Iron. Rise of Iron. Rise of Iron. You know, like I like that feel. Whereas, like over time, like new stuff is happening. You're checking Reddit. You're seeing what your friends are up to. Like you hear somebody get all excited. Oh my god! You got to see what's going on. Like on the side of this cliff, there's mm-hmm. a taken portal that brings you into I a really dungeon. Love- yeah, <laughs> so cool. I really love it. And we're gonna have Festival of the Lost coming up pretty soon. And they said that there's gonna be a twist on that. So I'm super excited to find out what that is. Hopefully, it's not just like Cade dead body talking yeah and all right temper in my expectations for festival of the lost oh for sure yeah. yeah i mean i mean forsaken's been pretty good though it's so been maybe, pretty good it's been pretty good festival of the lost has been pretty bad though it's been pretty bad <laughs> 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 pretty bad uh did you guys uh, get a chance to play breakthrough yet i didn't i'm wondering if no. you guys did i did yeah. i don't know how i feel about the mode of can you explain the mode? I remember seeing a video. So the from mode, Game there, there's like a, a vault that's in the middle, and you have to fight over capturing this vault. It's basically like just a capture point. And then if you capture it, then you have to go and try and capture the more difficult vault, which will be basically in the enemy spawn. Okay. For the, basically, so if you do get down by capture by your enemy team capturing a vault, you have a chance to come back because you will respawn right next to your vault. Yikes. Does the spawn timer clo- slow down, or how do they? How do they? I don't think so. Really? Seems like such an advantage. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. I've seen a lot of people on Twitter be like, "Oh, you mean the mode where you, uh, if you capture the first one, you're screwed. you're screwed." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it seems like mm. if you capture and then you have to like run across if you die while they're just like yeah supering and like laning, it seems like that's like a you're gonna be screwed. 
Does your spawn move to the middle, or do you still spawn in your original? I, if you're I, the I think you still spawn in your original place. Jeez. I think. I might be wrong. I played one game, and I was like... Mm. Yeah. I don't know. I'd prefer to go play quick play. I don't know. I'm I I don't know. You spawn apparently oh, you spawn, spawn mid, mid after first. Spawn timer slows okay, down. So you're not super far away, but you're still at a disadvantage compared huh. to the team defending. Yeah, I haven't played it yet, so I can't like specifically say how it felt, but it, that it seems like an interesting concept for sure. And I like mm-hmm. them trying to make new modes that could be for uh, yeah. for comp, but like hmm, that seems like a snowball. It's it's also really hard to get a good view of it just playing the breakthrough playlist because people keep leaving. <laughs> oh, so really? Oh, really? it's hard to really have like a good solid match of breakthrough at the moment. I did like that you can earn your rewards by playing it. Yeah, that's nice. Your weekly, yeah, power rank yeah. games. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they how many? They added three maps too. Was that what it was? They added new maps, yeah. No, are these maps... I've have played... you played... Oh, my God. Have you played the new, like, nine-centric one? No. It's it's a big white map. It feels like a maze in there. The one that it looks like huge. a skateboard park? Yeah, yeah. That's a good yeah. description of Another it. big it's map? Big. Like, I, I played it for the first time. I've only played it one time. And yeah. my impression of it was, I don't know where the fuck I'm going here. I'm like, <laughs> I'm running in a straight line. I don't see anything on my radar because the thing is so big that you just don't see anybody on radar. Is it? And I turn around to my left, but I don't really realize there's a doorway to my right because everything looks the same because it's all white. <laughs> uh, denied. It, it takes me getting used to. Is it Vostok big? I, it's hard to say. It's, it's hard. hard. To say. It's a skate park. Hmm. It's, skate park. It feels big. It's a like big real, ass skate park. But I also like I played it one match, and you know, like it takes a little longer to get. Yeah. Like everything does look the same, and it feels like a maze. You played it though, not in breakthrough, right? You played it on like control or clash or something. Um, I think it was clash. I think. So these new maps aren't specific to breakthrough, right? No. Good. No. Because no, no, I was no. worried that they were just making maps for breakthrough, and if the mode flopped, then it'd be like, oh boy, that's good enough. Uh, I like new maps. I'm always excited to see new maps. I'm a little worried though of things like Vostok. Because of Vostok, I can't stand that map. And if another big ass map <laughs> shows that. up, I re- it makes me sad because I hear the music and I'm like, Yeah, God damn. I'm like, here we go, <laughs> playing Call of Duty in Destiny play. right now. <laughs> the, this, so I played, I played the map that they did the combat reveal stream on. That mm-hmm. seems fine for the most part. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm not. I didn't get in there and get mad at it, so it's good. And then I played the map that's on the Dreaming City. I actually kind of like that map. That one seems. That one yeah, seems I like cool. that one too. That was cool. Yeah. Nice. So I'm excited to play those. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what happened this week? We got, well, not not all, but. Yeah, I love the fact that I'm just there's things that are not getting checked off the list each week for me. No. Like I yeah. play a lot of Destiny. Totally. Straight up, I'm averaging like eight hours a day almost, and uh, there's just there's some things where I'm like, you know. What? That's going to roll off. I'm not getting that engram. And that's okay. Yeah, it's like, maybe I'm just not going to get that powerful reward. It's fine. Yeah. yeah. It's nice to be in that situation as opposed to like yeah. getting through everything on three characters in like two or three days and then being like, okay, I guess I'll go play strikes. <laughs> there's enough. Oh, yeah. I agree with that. There's there's enough variety that if you really don't like, if there's one activity that you just prefer not to do, like, Strikes or I don't really like doing the daily missions three times in a row. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm yeah. kind of okay with just letting that one slide. <laughs> like I'm okay with it. You know, like nothing against the missions, just I don't want to do the same one three times in a row. And I could do three different ones, but I just tend to do the the one that I think is going to be the fastest three times in a row. And by the third one, I'm hardly even paying attention. Mm-hmm. I'm falling asleep at that point. I'm just like, yeah, I want to be done with this. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice though they have like modifiers and things that change it up a bit. It's also really nice to have uh, was it three three strikes to choose for the nightfall, so you can kind of plan it. Yeah, that's, that's really a really nice, nice thing. I yeah. love that feature. Yeah, there's also yeah. new stuff to chase after. Like the inside terminus has a sniper rifle. I was trying to yep. trying to get one of those to drop. Um, oh my god, that like the fanatic one, that nightfall. Jesus. Oh my god. <laughs> 
That nightfall there. I've Stay never seen away. so many enemies in one place. Just <laughs> just running at me, not shooting me. They're just running at me with fire and anger. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's like with fury. Even though you're like, you're sweat, you're having the sweatiest PV experience of your life. You're just laughing because there's just these guys just running yeah. out there. Yeah, firebombing fire you. Like- <laughs> it's really fun. This DLC has gotten me to use an auto rifle more than I've used an auto rifle in forever. What's your, what are you using right and now? And I think it's because there's so many things that just are <laughs> running straight at you <laughs> that are going to burn or blow you up. <laughs> like there's the screams, there's the, uh, you know, there's the, uh, Scorn guys yeah. that kind of have that lantern, and that lantern can be a tough shot with a hand cannon. Yeah, because it moves around a lot more than like a normal headshot. So I've just I've gotten used to using an auto rifle. I feel like you can't hit it when it's doing the, the wind up. Like it, it just it's yeah. very hard. Yeah, yeah, you're just like I feel like it's literally like yeah. impossible. Like I've never never been able <laughs> yeah. to hit that thing when it's in the wind up mode. It's satisfying. I got that to shoot auto them. rifle from the the raid that has Firefly on it, and it just like for running just like regular old like strikes and dailies and stuff like that it just just mows through things and it's got uh the boss damage modifier on it too so it just does extra damage to yellow health bars it's it's good yeah, i was gonna say is that like your preferred auto rifle right now is that the one yeah, yeah? nice yeah just because it's got firefly it's nice and stable it's just easy it's got a ton in the bag it's just an easy auto rifle to use i can't let go of this go figure that i have right now it's got a range masterwork yeah. it's a go figure outlaw, great. rampage like it just it's perfect yeah. It's disgusting and crucible as well. It's great in PvE, disgusting yeah. and crucible. I got I switch between Ace of Spades and that gun right now. For depending on the situation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm still using the uh pulse rifle that I got the raid that has full auto and range and uh rampage on mm-hmm. it. It's not as good as go figure, but it's got full auto. So again, for running like strikes and you know, like that mindless stuff where you're half reading chat yeah. and half playing the game. It's just yeah, you're, you're awesome. not really looking. You're just <laughs> yeah. so, there was a point where I was doing the uh that nightfall. I don't know if I was doing it as a nightfall or a strike with the fanatic, and I was just spinning around in a circle shooting. I was just just <laughs> just spin and shoot, spin and shoot. Just don't panic. <laughs> Pretty much how I play the blind well. <laughs> 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 I, f- I finally got a, a bad omens with tracking and cluster bombs as well, which is very excited yeah, about. Yeah, I got one of those too. I like it. Yeah. I think, do you get that for your second reset as well? Like guaranteed? Oh, was it guaranteed? I, is that why I, I got it? I think you do. I haven't yeah. reset my infinity. It can definitely drop, but I think you get the, the master worked version with cluster and oh, tracking. Oh, really? Nice. When you, That's cool. When you reset for the second time. What if it has like the yeah. impact casing or whatever that gives more direct damage? Because that's that's what I'm now I, looking for. I yeah. have not reset. I was no. hoping to get that that combo in the raid. Mm-hmm. In the raid, the rocket. raid rocket launcher, which I do like, but it's not bad on this one. Either. How do you feel about <laughs> transfiguration? Um, that sounds like a made up word. At... <laughs> yeah, the scout rifle. Are you trying to fool me right the now? Scout rifle. <laughs> oh, the raid scout rifle. How do you feel about scout rifles, Briar? Huh? I mean. Yeah. Scout rifles are awesome weapons if you're a coward and you like sitting at the back of the map shooting from wow. uh, distances that are. If you uh, like playing on Vostok. Yeah, if you like <laughs> yeah. Vostok, scout rifles are the gun for you. <laughs> Aren't they bugged like 20 bugged. or 30% damage? Just, yeah, yeah so, they yeah. don't do any Leave it. damage. They're actually Leave it the way right it now. is. Yeah. If you get a scout <laughs> rifle feels real bad. and you use it and it's not performing to your expectations, the reason is that it's actually bugged at the moment. Actually bugged. Yeah. <laughs> feels real bad. Uh, Takes me 20 shots to kill a thrall. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I, I would like to use some scout rifles in an aggressive yeah. nature, not in a casual <laughs> sit in the back of the map nature. I'd like to use them, but they're bugged right now. And I'd like to. In fact, I got the um, the curated role for transfiguration. Ended up getting rid of it because it was a scout rifle, but I, <laughs> I kind of wanted to keep it. I needed a light level, though, man. Wasn't going to use that thing. Yeah. That light level can force some hard decisions on you. Yeah. Yeah, it can. Uh, so, speaking of the TWAB, they talked about how the they're aware of the economy of Masterwork Cores and Infusion Rifle. Yeah, this was interesting, or Infusion right? stuff, yeah. Yeah. So, they're going to be adjusting. They're going to make some adjustments, right? What's the... Do you have the bullet list in front of you, Briar? I do. Uh, so, 
basically what they're going to do is they're going to they're monitoring core supplies and the numbers aren't as high as they like. We're planning to create a more reliable and plentiful source for cores. We're going to rename master cores so their purpose is more obvious as well. Um, so this isn't something that's going to get fixed tomorrow. You know, like this is something that they're looking at. They're still they're still playing mm -hmm. with and they're planning to create a more reliable and plentiful core source. They haven't done it yet. There's a lot of options they could do. I mean, like, I think Triple mentioned uh, gunsmith bounties. You know? Yeah, that'd be a good one. Get some cores from doing bounties every day. Like, just mm -hmm. guaranteed sources, yep. right? Yeah, I just, I really want them to just utilize Zer. Like, just make Zer be useful for people, not just people who don't have the year one exotics, but for people who are actively playing. Like, they go to Zer, he has some quests maybe for you to do, or he, you can exchange something, just something. Mm -hmm. A way for me to get mod components, masterwork cores, like anything that's more difficult to come by. Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd really like that a lot. Yep. It would be cool if it was quest based or not quest based, but bounty based. You know, bounty like based, yeah. so you actually have to do something to get them. I know, I know, a lot of people are really pissed off about this, but I do. I don't necessarily want to see them taken out of upgrading a weapon or infusing a weapon, just because. Like, I like that there's decisions right now. Yeah. Like, I yeah, like, I like that. that too. Um, I, but I would like to, to ease up on that economy a little bit. Yeah, the economy for sure needs to get adjusted, but like outright taking them out doesn't make sense because no. like if you're infusing every piece of gear that you get then you're doing it wrong just straight up you need to wait <laughs> do yeah. not you might be ugly yeah it might not be optimal <laughs> yeah. yeah there's a reason why you get to 600 and then start doing your builds because that's when you've exhausted your light level and there's no reason to like infuse every piece of light level gain into the gear because unless it's yeah. unless it's whisper like there's a few Cases like Whisper, yeah. Ace of Spades, or your Go Figure that's the perfect role. And you do that in the 10 minutes you're about before you're about to go into the raid. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you got to be smart about your, your economy. I still have like 100 master cores, and I've been hovering around 100 because I would get some, and then I'd spend some, get some, spend some. Um, like if every weapon you get, you're, you know, you're infusing, it's, you got to you gotta ease up on it. That being said, mm -hmm. if you're a brand new player and you don't have any of those master cores, yeah, I understand. It's definitely a struggle right now. And that's why they're looking at it, and they definitely need to, uh, they need to add some stuff in there, so we can get it or get get more options for it. But outright taking it out, I think cheapens the, uh, it cheapens the grind, and I like that there's grind in the game again. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I completely agree. That's, I I think people who came into the game during different phases have different opinions on these things, mm -hmm. right? People who fell in love with vanilla destiny. It's part of what we fell in love with was the grind, right? People yeah, who came absolutely. in later where there wasn't a grind, you know, they're going to see a grind all of a sudden plopped into their game that they love and be like, what is this? Like, I didn't sign up for this. Mm -hmm. So I think you know, part of that is just what you like about destiny. Yeah. Yep. I like grind. I like the fact that I'm looking at, like I got a Duke with Outlaw and um, Rampage, and it's fun. <laughs> I was like, oh, really good. I didn't think I was gonna like this gun, but Outlaw and Rampage suddenly I'm digging this. And I also got an Outlaw kill clip on a um, on a Better Devils. I started using that, and I was like, I have not had a single Outlaw Rampage Outlaw kill clip drop at all. Really that bad. Yes. Oh man, that is a bummer. You gotta like, you gotta like rub up against Pope or something. <laughs> well, <laughs> but I, I'm telling you, when I start playing my PC character, I'm I'm sure she's gonna get some stuff because she's always super lucky. Nice. Yeah. So we'll see. <laughs> uh, I got a trackless waist with kill clip and quick draw on it today that I'm kind of looking forward to trying out. Nice. Trackless That's uh, waist. 110 round per minute. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Oh wait, no, I'm I'm thinking of a different gun. I'm sorry. It's slow fire and hand cannon. The thin line. That's what oh, I'm thinking. Thin of. 110. Oh my god. Have you read the lore tab on that gun? No. It is the saddest thing I think I've seen in all of Destiny. Really? It is very, very sad. It's basically um 
it's what your ghost wishes they could say to you. Ugh. Oh, really? And it's all the story of, I'm scared that I'm losing you. I love you. I don't want to lose you to this. And I'm just like, oh, no. Oh, my God. My Man, ghost I had an ex-girlfriend who gave me a letter just like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Jeez. So our ghost is kind of clingy. Is that what's going on it, here? <laughs> it's, very, it's really, honestly, read through it. It's not super long. It's just what your ghost wishes that they could say to you. And it's the lore tab of Thin Line. My ghost talks literally all the yeah, time. Well, shut up, right? I cannot Does imagine it tell you, that there's something that's gone It's scared to tell unsaid. you those things. <laughs> scared. Speaking of ghost talking or things like a ghost, uh, there's been some wishes discovered in the raid. And they are pretty fantastic. Oh, they are pretty, they are pretty good. So I got to do the raid with the failsafe wish, where failsafe becomes you, essentially. The failsafe gets to ride along as the guardian and gets to add commentary to each part of the raid. And it is phenomenal. It was good stuff. I, I can't wait. I'm going to do that tomorrow. I ha I have to do that tomorrow. That's amazing. It's so good. Like, I... I did the I did the one with the headshot. Yes, we did like, that, right? Yeah, that was fun. At certain parts, it was a little weird. <laughs> it's it's like this weird noise. It's not the it's not the Halo noise with like the children screaming. Right. It's a different noise. It's like the zing 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 zing. zing. Yeah, <laughs> it's very weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And when things get intense, it's weird to hear that going off constantly. <laughs> yeah. But it's great. I, I love the fact that that's in there. This is one of these things where this is so good that if it's not in the future of things, I'm going to be disappointed. Like failsafe being able to take over the lines of the raid as you're going through yeah. it. Absolutely. Like, I want yeah. that to happen now all the time. What is she? Ta I don't know. I don't even want to ask. I want to hear. She's like, whoa, like yeah. I'm in a body. This is cool. <laughs> <laughs> she... She even gets scared over Riven. It's so awesome. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> we all did. <laughs> it's so good. Uh, they, Hello. Um, yeah. Hello, Mr. Pope Bear. Oh, hey, Pope. Hello. Hello. Uh, what are you guys doing? Just talking about uh, Destiny. Oh, a little podcast. R really? Yeah, man. Yeah. Am, I am, am I interrupting anything? I mean. Oh. No, man. Uh, we're thinking about doing an ad read, but I've been scolded. I'm not allowed to do it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think, Pope? You want to you want to do an ad read for us, Pope? Um, not yes, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Just jump on in and I'm so, get right to it. I'm so prepared. I'm so prepared for this for the for this ad read. Yeah, um, I'm pretty prepared. I walk. I, I, I'm literally still wearing here. I'm gonna jump. Are you in. wearing underwear? I'm I am wearing underwear, I would hope I he he just came from work. <laughs> there so we go. Hope he has oh, look at Dapper yeah. Pope there. Oh, fesh AF. <laughs> this is he he actually looks like the leader of the jazz band Pope in the Yeah. Bunny yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I don't have time to oh, set up anything. Mute here. Skype. On, mute Skype. Move. Mute Skype. Okay. Mute, mute Skype. Awesome. <laughs> I was worried there for a second. <laughs> Sometimes Skype gets left a bit. That's true. Yeah. And we're just screaming. We're just. Yep. Yep. I don't want to interrupt your conversation, but it sounds awful and I'm dying. <laughs> the doubling effect <laughs> is killing my ears. <laughs> uh, all right. This isn't going to work behind the scenes, behind Pope Bears. That's fine. Like scenes. You know, it's just ghetto it's enough that it's charming. It's go. charmingly ghetto. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> it's just ghetto. Enough. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. So uh, we've uh, we've talked quite a bit about the things going on this week in Destiny, man. A lot of good stuff. Yeah, yeah. How, there's a lot of really good things. How has your journey been so far with Forsaken? Where are you at? Because I know your yeah, uh, I know your time is limited. So yeah, so I get about ten hours a week, and um, so right now I'm at uh, five forty five. Nice. I believe. That's pretty five. good. Well, factor in Pope yeah. RNG. Mm, there is that. That's, that's <laughs> yeah. at least worth 15 light levels, right? That's at least that. Um, so yeah, I, I'm I'm going to be doing my first raid this uh, this Saturday. Really? Uh, I look forward to hearing you yeah. getting nice. the thousand voices. 
Yes. Camp. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the uh, thousand, um, the thousand voices tell me mine. No, um, I am trying to switch out of work mode into gaming talk mode. So give me one second. Um, I am really excited about what's going on this raid. I'm going to go with the WTF Game Nation guys, nice. their raid nice. team this Saturday. I'm really pumped about it. I've been, you know, planning this for, like I said, you guys, casual players, they don't mind the long wait. They just like to plan. Yeah. So I know that every day I can log in and I can do my dailies, which give me some power levels. I, I level up one level every day or two. And I'm, that's my, that's my pattern. And I, and every, and so yeah. every day I jump on and I play for that time I have and I level up a level and, or two. And um, if I'm lucky, and then uh, I'll get there eventually. Does, does it so, feel yeah, rewarding to you? Yeah, um, a lot of fun. Uh, the The daily heroic activities, the daily heroic missions, those are like reimagining the game for me. It's so much fun to do. Go back and do those at a higher light. They're 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 interesting missions. Um, they're they don't take a credible amount of time, and I get a powerful reward from them. Mm -hmm. Um, I love having the different activity for the daily rotate between an island. Uh, uh, so uh, the locations now mean something to me. Going to a location and doing something specifically to get those dailies means something. Going to the tower to get your bounties means something. I have to be really selective as to what I want to do that day. Um, this morning I was able to do Gambit because of the... and, and Do the, not tell me you got the meatball was, first try. <laughs> No, I didn't. Thank God. <laughs> so, it's 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 a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. I'm I'm enjoying the the pace that I'm taking the game. Um, it does. I did start feeling a little anxious about it originally, like uh, at least within the last within two weeks mm, of it starting, I'm because I was still in the same. Yeah, I was in the same mindset from D two where I had everything right, and I yeah. got everything, and I finished everything, and so I had to just change my mindset of like. Look, I'm only gonna for for ten hours. I'm a ten hours a week is really gonna be about one character, one grind, yeah, one thing, mm -hmm. and so I can't do any more. I honestly can't. I can't even finish one character. So I got, uh, and fortunately, this community picked me, a hunter for me. Awesome. So I'm, I'm that is stuck. fortunate for you. Hunter that, only. Now I'm stuck on this hunter because that's that's the only thing I have time for, and I really want to play Titan, and I really want to play Warlock, and so no, I'm yeah. stuck Once on this. Once you level up, though, Pope, I think you'll find that it uh, it relaxes a little bit. Like when you don't feel the need to do like the dailies and everything, yeah. like every time you log in, then you can you put those high level weapons onto your Titan or your Hunter. Yeah. And they come up to power level like super fast, like super yeah. fast. Yeah, yeah, and I and I'm enjoying that. I'm 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 I promised that I would follow this character through to the end game, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And so that's what I'm doing. And I'm I'm playing the hunter straight through. And I can tell you that I apologize for years of bashing hunters. They are fun as hell yes, to play. Yes, they are. They are fun. They yeah. are fun. They are fun. You got to change your play style up. You got to be sneaky. You got to be. Uh, it, agile and um you got to be accepting of like the role of what you're going to play like sorry i don't I, do you guys mind the baby crying in the background no no, it's fine. no one minds it's fine. the baby right. it's fine. so so the, i guess the uh the the thing that i'm really excited about is how to play the character the the the, the solar hunter oh is phenomenal so good it's so it's good phenomenal Oh my god I, and and i'm starting to enjoy the sneaky uh void warlock the void hunter you know, you crouch, you shoot, you go invis, you plan your next attack. You're like, you're invis for a long time. Mm -hmm. And you're like, okay, what am I going to do? And then you're like, you throw all this stuff at all these guys, and then you shoot one and you go invis again. And they're like, what the hell? <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, so I'm really enjoying uh, that. The super, uh, you know, I'm enjoying, I, I encourage everybody to force themselves to play a character they don't, they don't normally play. Like, I'm telling you, you will get a whole new enjoyment for the game. I didn't think I would love uh, playing as a hunter, but I am very much You've enjoying seen the light. it. And I'm, I mean, don't get me wrong. Titan, master class, you know, for life. Hey, but Titans are for work. Forget the job done. Hunters are for fun. <laughs> all right? That's the way it is, uh, man. But, it, but I'm telling you, it's like uh, if, you haven't, if, you've, if you've been in that mindset and you haven't given another one, force yourself make your your other character off limits 
and and force yourself to do a, a level a, a level uh, grind up, and you will appreciate it later. They, uh, it's just um, it's just a ton of fun. Yeah, hunters feel fantastic. But yeah, that's where I'm at. That's where I'm at. And I hear we get some uh, raid guys on tonight. Yeah. Yeah, so. I'm very excited about it. Yeah, let's um let's let's get them let's get them into the call. So we should that, do right? that ad read, right? We should talk about uh, yes. Uh, we, should talk about. Taffy. What should we talk about Taffy? Gamer link. So, <laughs> if I needed to find a group because I let's say I don't have a, a group of people to play Destiny with, and I need to yes. get and let's say I want to do the um, the dungeon that just released. Right. That's right. Where could I go to find so to find a couple of the gamers? One of our yeah. uh, our sponsor for the podcast this month is GamerLink, and it's an app on Android and um, iOS, and it's it's more than just an LFG. So if you're looking for a group, that's great. You can jump on there and do that, but it's also a way of meeting like-minded gamers uh, that you can form a clan with, and you can do a it's a has a clan chat feature in it that you can use to talk to each other and coordinate games. Um, it's also across many different um, games, so right. it's not it's just multi-game and multi-platform, right? Right. Yeah. So you can be you can be using it for jumping into Fortnite. There's a ton of other games. You guys should really check it out. Um, take a look at the app, download it, uh, play around with it. I've had a blast with it. I've been matching up some games with it when I've been wanting to do the Nightfall. Um, normally I, I just tweet out, Hey, anybody want to join me for a nightfall, but not, not everybody has that opportunity or that mm -hmm. luxury. Right. Yeah. So I've been trying out the app for that and it has been successful every time, um, jumping in with game, finding other people that want to play and finding them quickly. There's a lot yeah. of people on it. And you can use it for LFG, but then once you like make friends that you want to keep, you can also use it for kind of clan management and clan communication. That's right. Yeah. You, you can gra meet people and then. Um, on the LFG and then join and then have them join your clan and, and, and start a group. And that's really what Destiny is about. Like if you find a right. person that you really enjoy playing with through the LFG, just add them. Let's you gotta put a ring on that. Yes, yeah. put a be friends forever. Ring Go through that. many games together. Yes, many games. So I highly recommend it. Uh, take a look at Gamer Link. Um, you know, there's a, gonna be a link in the description below. Click on it. It will take you to um, whatever site you you know. It's, it's a smart link, so click on it, download the app, and try it out. Boom, boom, good, boom. And thank you very much, GamerLink, for supporting the podcast. Yep. Uh, we thank appreciate you very much. The work that you're doing, yeah, and the work you're Make doing. Sure you check them out, guys. Yeah, check them out. Mm. My my unicorn mug is ready. Nice. Isn't there somebody we should be talking? I swear to God, we're forgetting yes. something tonight. <laughs> what are we forgetting? <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't there somebody? Let's get let's get him in here. Was T Von supposed to come on? T Von? No, uh, not T Von. <laughs> no, T Von. No, somebody. No. Uh, uh, wait, 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 wait. Uh, I know who it is. Who? This guy named Hippity Hop. Hippity Hop. Hippity Hop. Hippity Hop. Hop. The Hippity <laughs> Hop. The Hip Hip Hopity Don't Stop. Hip Hop. Hooray. We have and, Hip Hop on. That's uh huh. And um and, and uh um, like conceptually, like all of hip hop or like <laughs> yes. and, uh, this, <laughs> this guy named uh, this guy named Black Sideburns. I don't know. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> what? Blonde. Blonde sideburns. Sorry. Listen, I walk into an insult already. Yeah, that's <laughs> just Pope. That's Both just the Pope way man. we roll. That's how we guns here. So, gentlemen. Are you both in this call? Is is the power of the internet? Is <laughs> is it is it is it working? Are we uh, are we live? Uh, yeah, it seems like it. I think we're live. I don't think we have video, but we're we're audio right now. Okay. Right. All right. Okay. We're work, we're working on the video piece of it. Okay. Let's get let's get the video piece into. Yeah. It. Once you guys do get into Skype, just make sure you hit the mute button on the Skype, and then we should be good. Pope should be sending you a little little invite. Uh, I got you right here, baby. I got your invite. We're professional eight. Yes. We're professionals. Professional. Right? <laughs> we didn't even mention some Tinder during the ad read. Mm -hmm. Perfect. <laughs> we did <laughs> not. Wow. Hey. There they are. There oh, hello. Just make sure. <laughs> Look at all those green screens. Okay, you yeah. muted. Nice, nice. Cool. Hey, guys. These. Hey, Look at these. Lots, we can't see you, but we can see your hand moving. I just a camera. You. Oh, what? <laughs> ah, you're using the new Skype. That's why. Yeah, it does that. 
So I just left work, and you guys are still there. It's 7.30 on the Pacific Coast. Thank you very much yeah. for staying way past your your duty-free, uh, your duty And time. everybody says game devs don't work long hours, right? Unbelievable, right? <laughs> everybody says that. I did that. play some, some Gambit in between this. I'm not sure that I really Did you get the meatball? Working. Did you get the meatball to spawn? Not yet. I'm still searching. Oh. I'm still searching. Same. It's a... Uh, um, so for everybody who's joining or for who's listening to the podcast right now, two gentlemen that are in front of us, um, Andrew Hops, say hello. Hey guys. He is a uh, phenomenal artist, and uh, mm. why don't you? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, why don't you tell? Why don't you tell us? Uh, what, what's your title? What do you do at at Bungie? Uh, I'm the art lead on the raid team. Uh, I'm helping our world team. And uh, all the art disciplines put together a great player journey in raids. So, cool. Yes, indeed. Kind of looking um, off towards Pope over here, but <laughs> and, 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 and sitting to your left is uh, Joe Blackburn. Hello, sir. Hi. And um, what do you do? Uh, introduce yourself. What do you do at Bungie? I'm the uh, raid team lead at Bungie. So we sit very close to each other. Yeah, just yeah. like the picture. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, we went back to back in real life, but it was close. I mean, you guys didn't seem to have, but you didn't, you didn't look uncomfortable in the picture. If you know, yeah. you're, you're, you're right next to each other. You're, yeah. do you like, yeah, do you I like, mean, we can get closer right now. I mean, this is pretty, you know, <laughs> oh, <about> boy. Right. <laughs> I thought he was going to lean in for the kiss there. <laughs> yeah. Good I mean, let's go. <laughs> Putting a ring on it, man. So you guys, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm always excited when I, you know, we talk to a lot of, no, no offense to the community managers, but we talk Ooh. to them, a, we talk to them a lot, you know, and, uh, you know, every time we here, get, so. yeah, it out. Well, <laughs> every time we get a bungee, an actual bungee developer, you know, I'm just kidding. <laughs> every time no we get one of bridges. you guys. <laughs> on the show. I'm looking I, at these right now <laughs> at the same time all this is happening. So just blink twice if he's threatening you. <laughs> all right. So I want to, I want to, I honestly like there's the kid inside of me that wants your job, that wants to know what you do, how how you got to where you are now. And I know we're going to talk about the raid and you guys, you guys, first off, you guys did a phenomenal yes. job on this raid. Amazing yes. job. Insane. Everybody, it's everybody amazing. loves it. But I want to, I want to find out a little bit about you guys, because there's a big part of me that is um, when I'm every bit since the back in the Halo days, I always wanted to hear about how your journey, your personal journey from from where you started to to developing and making games, and I and we're going to get into, you know, we're going to get into the raid, but um, I do want to hear Hops, um, where did you like? How did what, what's? Can you tell me a little bit about your background or how you came to start working in game development and at Bungie? Sure. Uh, I want to say it was Toy Story was like the first time I got really into three D. Uh, that's the earliest thing I remember. It, you know what? We could go all the way back to Legos, but uh, I, think, I think Toy Story was the first time I really wanted to make things on a computer. Uh, and um, I was super into Counter-Strike and Quake and Unreal Tournament and Tribes. Uh, and then uh, I kind of lucked out because right here, I grew up in Redmond, which is uh, very local to Bungie. And we also had DigiPen, which is a tech college that specializes in game development. Um, so I got really lucky there because I didn't have to go far to uh, find a place to start doing something that really interested me. Um, obviously played Halo a ton and uh, got a job first just across the freeway from Bungie at Hidden Path. And uh, that was a lot of fun. We did uh, Defense Grid and uh, ended up working with Valve on Counter-Strike and Left 4 Dead, which was amazing because uh, everyone there was incredible. Um, that really uh, inspired me, too. Uh, and it, while I was there, uh, I was obsessed with Bungie. I, I went to school with a bunch of people who ended up working at Bungie, like Pat Jandro, Forrest Soderlund. Um, and uh, they got jobs here 
And I saw how awesome it was, and it became my life goal to work at Bungie. Uh, so uh, I started applying, and I was not ready when I first applied. I applied probably four times before they said, okay, come in for an interview. Well, let me, let, let me ask you more about that application process, because from what I've heard, and I've spoken to a, a, you know, a bunch of people, that it's not it's it's nothing to 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 laugh at. It, you're it's it's a it's a process, right? So can you walk I, us through yeah. your 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 hiring process, your interview process? Yeah, I mean they they get somebody from every department, and you have a full day of interviews. Mm -hmm. um, there's a social lunch that's like a culture fit type thing. Uh, I think I was so excited that I wasn't that nervous. I don't think. Um, maybe some of my interviewers will tell you differently, but um, <laughs> I thought it went well. Okay. Uh, and uh, yeah, that, I got the call back. Yeah. And then, and so in in the interview process, you said there's um, there's people from every discipline. Are they um, are they asking you like esoteric questions? Um, what are your thoughts on you know the string theory and things like that? Or are they talking about? Um, are they asking you practical questions like practical? Yeah, know, it'll be how what I'm applying for relates to their discipline. Okay. Uh, so, you know, I had the designer who was talking to me about Counter-Strike map design and uh, um, see, uh, I had a effects artist who uh, talked to me about like her performance, uh, managing that type of stuff, yeah. Is anybody, that, anybody that interviewed you for the position, did you end up working with them on a, on a, in a project later on at Bungie? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, probably every single one of them. <laughs> and who's your, who's your favorite? <laughs> uh, I'm just oh, yeah. <laughs> what, what was the first? Uh, just kidding. Who's your manager? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. What was the first title you uh, worked on? Uh, D one. D one. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. And uh, um, and and the team that you originally got hired to to work with in in the world art, and I was uh, Rob Adams was my manager. Yeah. Yeah, and I cool. had hung out with him a few times because, uh, because I was friends with Pat Jandro. We ha had been up snowboarding with all of those guys a ton, so I kind of had an in. Even some of my interviewers were like, "Oh, hey, pops, uh, good <laughs> to see you. How's it going?" <laughs> <laughs> I remember, I remember doing because I did the uh, um, the Cosmodrome ride along yep. and with uh, w with Rob, and I remember you were like super inquisitive of what I thought of that um, that space. Yeah, yeah. And, I got to work um, with him on Cosmodrome. Right, and um, I feel like you you were you were just like you're already on the next project, but you're so in, like keen on player feedback and how it influenced your practice. Is that something? Is that a practice that you've continued today? I, I feel like you're. I see you very active on Twitter. Um, right. Um, are you also a redditor? Redditor. Uh, yeah, I've. I think I've dialed that back just because, I think there's a faster response time on Twitter, obviously. Um, also, I got scared away by the, Bungie has replied, but not really, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll say something stupid and then it'll end up at the very top of a post. Sure, sure. But yeah, I, that's funny to hear because I actually, I don't remember, I mean, I, I know, I remember talking to you back then, but uh, I've definitely become way more interested in talking to the community about like, getting direct feedback and stuff like that. So, yeah. Well, cool. something that I was really impressed by because we um, we used to do the, when I was with Dads of Destiny, we would do the um, uh, yeah. rating, we'd do the uh, the raid leads um, um, with uh, Bungie, um, Dads Give Back. And I remember we did a raid with you and um, I had played, by that time I had played with about a hundred different um, Bungie um, um, developers at that point, um, helping them through the Vault of Glass. And uh, um, you, you, the, the, your questions were so poignant. Like it, it, it was almost like I was being interviewed. Like I was on interviewed, and um, you, it, it feels like you were already looking to do raid, to work on the raid team back then. Is that is that was that a goal for you to work towards being on the raid team? Uh, not necessarily. I think I, I've always just been super interested in the player experience. Uh, and I ended up working on the Dreadnought, which was a lot of fun mm -hmm. from that perspective. And then uh, that just kind of linked into King's Fall. 
Uh, and that was the first raid I worked on, and then I was absolutely hooked on that because you were you were the design lead. you were the world experience. lead for the for for um the Levi no no the I'm sorry for, uh, for, uh, the, for the dreadnought uh, right just the destination owner uh, Mark Pearson was the the world lead and then there was a right. lot of world artists that worked on that but um yeah I I took care of it as we started to ship it did you, and then moved on to King did you Ball. craft the dick wall. Uh, I don't know what you're talking. About. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I did remember you talking about and being very passionate about hiding and fi having players find things in yeah. um, the dreadnought. And um, yeah, that was a lot of fun. And um, I mean, that that was something that you were really interested in. You didn't necessarily have a whole lot of time to add that stuff in. Um, did you? Did you? Um, did you? Take that with you to um, to this raid and um, your passion. Obviously, there's a ton of stuff hidden in the Dreaming City. Is is that something you brought with you from that experience? I mean, I think everybody on the team wants to do that, and a lot of people worked on the transept. <laughs> uh, but that was like one of the first meta puzzles uh, mm -hmm. that we started to kind of add to a raid, and and yeah, part of that was like. Um, Hey, we've got some extra time. What what can we do that's really special here? And that's definitely carried on through raids. Is like we we try to do stuff like that. Let's put a hidden basketball court where people <laughs> will just throw <laughs> themselves at it for for hours upon hours many and then hours. many yeah. hours <laughs> and then. So what what's the story behind that? Is that it was that a, a was that something that had a specific purpose? You guys remember? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I, mean, I think that like that's our. That was a really good lesson for us to learn. Right. In in our mind, like Ops made this with another guy on the team, uh, Jake, and mm -hmm. I, the basketball court. We're like, oh, we're gonna put an Easter egg in the game. It's gonna be a basketball court. How <laughs> cool is that, right? People are gonna find it and say, cool, a basketball court is here. <laughs> Not cool. This leads to something, right? Like you're there. You're at the basketball court. Like how cool is that? <laughs> Where's my reward? So, good lesson <laughs> learned about uh, Easter eggs. Right. Yeah. At what point did you guys realize that you had to, it, you had to like essentially pull the plug of like what's going to be there in the basketball court? Like, because obviously we would have gone on for weeks in the basketball court if you yeah. guys hadn't said something. Right. <laughs> well, I mean, we knew where it ended. And uh, yeah, once people brute forced in there and then. They were like, we were like, cool, they're in. Let's see what they do. And then they started trying to figure out what to do next. And we were like, yeah, we should probably. Because <laughs> there was no moment that's like, congratulations. And there's there a seems, thing there that seems tells what, you, oh, I did it. Was that so, something where the you guys woke up the next morning? Because I remember that happening overnight. It happened right? really yeah, late. Happened I remember yeah. watching mm -hmm. Dado stream, and I was like, what are they doing? It's really <laughs> late. Yeah, I think so. I remember the next morning. We had been reading about a bunch of that stuff, and then we were like, "Yeah, we should probably tweet something." And I think that's when we said, "Hey, yeah. let's give it another hour." I like, though, how, yeah. let's some lunch. I like how the option <laughs> there was the option of, you know, we could just let it slide in the, you know, <laughs> and, just, and uh, just let them suffer. And Joe, um, Joe, your your uh, your role as kind of overseeing raid design. Those are kind of um, some of those challenges that you have to come up you have to deal with right you're you're responsible for how much time the teams have to go into different um activities or different encounters and what you can and can't put into the to the to the raid right Is that explain explain to us well first of all let me actually start over i'm sorry because i really want to hear how you got to where you are in your position with the raid team um, where did you, did you also go to DigiPen? Where did you start your, um, your, your education in, uh, uh I did not. Uh, so I, uh, I went to school actually with the missing member of the DCP podcast. Uh, I oh, found yeah? out during his, uh, 
tenure at Bungie, me and Holtzman went to the same school in Middle Tennessee State University. Oh. Unfortunately, uh, he was finding bacon babies and like painting naked people. Yeah, you would never run into him. Yeah. He was the guy you that was in his in his he dorm room. He was the room. guy everyone avoided. Adam. He was he was he hadn't seen the light in three months. There was magic. There was wow. There was oh, not yeah. a whole lot of anything else. Yeah, and bacon babies. Yeah. So. that was very similar to my uh, college career. So that's why we never met each other in college. <laughs> Uh, we were both doing that on opposite sides of the city. Uh, and yeah, I thought, uh, I thought I was going to be a detective and be in the FBI. Oh yeah. And be nice. just, just cracking up off screen. Uh, so I was like, I'm going to get an English degree and I'm going to go to law school. And the whole time I'm like playing so much World of Warcraft, mm -hmm. like this <laughs> oh, ungodly amounts of World of Warcraft. <laughs> okay. Uh, and uh, as I was graduating from school, I thought, well, I'm, I have an English degree. Like, I don't, I can't get into games, but I was fortunate enough to have, uh, my dad works for an airline, so I figured I could fly out anywhere. So I just put in a bunch of applications for a bunch of studios and said, I'll test your game if you'll have me, right? And I put in a bunch of MMOs, and I was like, I've played these games so much, like, I could test your game. Uh, I got a callback from... Uh, Zenimax Online. They make Elder Scrolls Online. Uh, if you guys mm -hmm. played that, uh, mm -hmm. and so Some I started there in uh, in test, and I uh, got to see sort of the early development of that game, and uh, was lucky enough to make the jump uh, from test design uh, through sort of the the grace of a bunch of other designers uh, that were like, "Yeah, we'll we'll try him out." The scrappy young kid. Uh, and made a bunch of dungeons uh, in Elder Scrolls Online, and I worked on uh, their version of rating, which we called Trials, uh, and eventually did some class design. And when Destiny came out, I played a ton of Destiny, uh, and I played the Vault of Glass, and I was like, Destiny is doing something new. Uh, I loved MMOs, uh, but I sort of felt in this, like, you're in the shadow of this colossal beast uh, when you're making MMOs and you're not working in World of Warcraft. And even if you are working in World of Warcraft, I think they're in their own shadow a lot, trying to, mm -hmm. you know, top the last thing they did. Yeah. Uh, and Destiny was this whole new space, and that seemed to had infinite possibilities, and a, an opening for a raid designer opened up, and I applied and went through a bunch of tests and phone screens, and eventually flew down to Bungie. Hmm. Uh, Nice. And what was the first project you worked on at Bungie? So I started uh, right after Proto Hard Mode came out, I think is my timeline. So uh, I, the first raid I worked on was Kingsfall with this guy right here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice. And so uh, which you, is why my Twitter handle is Joe Garoff, because Joe Garoff was my first uh, ah. great <laughs> oh nice. that's amazing i love golgoroth too like that is a really fine fight and that's a that's a i mean that seems like con you know congratulations i mean that's a, mm -hmm. that's a that seems like a quick you're you're now the raid lead and that that's <laughs> that's awesome um yeah. did you was there like were you nervous at all when you started this project uh, about how, you know how long ago did you get tapped to say okay Take hops and 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 make and 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 a bunch of other amazingly talented people, right? And and make this and make the next raid. Uh, I mean, I think we started on Last Wish. Oh, uh, over a year ago, something or something. I mean, these things sit in the oven a long time, right? We have we have multiple things. We were making raid layers at the same time. We were finishing Leviathan at the same time. Uh, this one's been in the this one's been in the oven for a while, and we're and glad I, that it's out. Spire Stars was on the way out. Yeah, and I, I, I guess I, I guess I want to like I want to. Teft, you had a question. Yeah, I was. Uh, I want to know like, do you guys have multiple teams working on raids, or is it just one focused team that like knocks out each part and then moves on to like the next big vision that's happening in the universe for the Destiny? Uh, I mean, we're we're a big team, uh, and we. We focus probably on one thing, but we we sort of stair step it a little bit. As okay. one team closes, uh, we start doing something else. I think That's interesting. Uh, one thing that we've learned is it's really hard to stop working on something. Mm. 
<laughs> and so we have to like pull people off of it and say like, this will never get done if you keep working on it, right? Because all we yeah. want to do is make things better and better and better and better and better and change things. And at some point, we have to say, you can't change things anymore. Like, this is what it is. Move forward. And that's when people get to go on to the, the new fun. Yeah, the, uh, the, the scope, the scope of Last Wish, like, it just seems massive. And, mm. like, if you guys did that in a year, like, I, like, by the sounds of it, like, I'm blown away. <laughs> Yeah, like that's. It's, I mean, it's how does that even start? Like, how does the process start of that's, when yes. creating a raid? Like, where do you begin? Because this, like you were saying, Tefty, the scope is so yeah. massive in something like that. Like, how does it even start? This one was cool because we were working in concert with the Dreaming Cities development. Okay. So mm -hmm. while they're developing the palette and all the look for that stuff, we're massing out uh, encounters and the flow of bubble to bubble. Um, you know, player journey. Uh, so we kind of had some help on this one as far as like putting things together just because the Dreaming City was also building their very similar palette. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I wanted to ask you because it seems like that synergy between the open space, the um, connection of a, of, a, of a location, a public space, yeah. and a raid, this is the first time Bungie has um, married the two. And um, it seems like something that's pretty revolutionary for, for at least the Destiny universe and something that has really been impactful for the community. Um, at what point in, that, in the development did you see that as the direction you were going to take with um, the raid, where it was going to impact the, the public space and they were going to work, they were, gonna, they were going to evolve together? Really early on, uh, we knew the, the raid was going to be the centerpiece of a destination, and we wanted the destination and the raid to feel incredibly connected, uh, specifically through narrative. I think we've you know, always struggled to, like, how can we tell a good story in a raid uh, that if you complete the campaign, you feel like, I've satisfied something. And also, when you go into the raid, you're like, I know who this is. I know why this is important. So yeah. one of our really early drivers was like, okay, let's, let's get a whole destination in there. We can start uh, allowing players to understand why this is important. And, man, pretty early on in Forsaken, Steve Cotton was coming over, and he was like, what, what can we do to make uh, raids world first? Like, mm -hmm. it's, it's this unique thing to Destiny. Like, what can we do to make that have more impact and uh, this idea of like, okay, what if, what if the destination changes, right? Like, what if there's a huge impact on, and everyone's excited that like, oh, the Guardians have done it, right? We're there. Yeah. Uh, and that was, there was a lot of work going into that uh, and figuring out how do you have something that comes out after the raid, right? <laughs> That's the real, like, there's end game and it's after the raid. Like, what does that mean? Like, I remember when we <laughs> talked about that and it was like, barely pre-production in the raid and we had that conversation about like what what could happen when you're the world's first and yeah we'll so you've got this it's a yeah. huge difference that to the game though is like most most of the time we've played up to the raid and then you do the raid and you kind of relax and you're like okay, okay i'm gonna go play crucible for the next three weeks or i'm gonna you know do this or do that whereas now it it feels like the 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 game is continuing there, there is an actual end yeah. game the raid it really does feel like different. the raid like was it, the start of it right. it yeah it feels yeah. it feels uh, amazing i think we were just talking about that earlier where world's first is always this kind of cool thing for people who could do it but now if you're one of those players who can't participate you still have a reason to watch and get behind it and you're like what are they going to unlock and it just makes people really excited to tune into world's first so i yeah. think <laughs> these things being married together was just such an amazing yeah, it really amazing is. thing I, I wanted to ask you. Yeah, <laughs> I wanted to ask you about um, the development of the story and how, and the story we're on, the journey we're on. Because I, as much as I'd like to ask you about what comes next, I'm not going to. I I, I just absolutely won't because it, I don't want it ruined. And I don't even actually think I don't think you would tell me because I don't. I know I know enough bungee people that you wouldn't you wouldn't want it ruined either. But I do want to ask about. You're, you're, you're in designing this raid, right? And it's got a story that links into 
earlier on in the in the in the concept of you're doing this uh, um, this campaign, and then you go into you you jump right into a story that's linked to the campaign and the raid, but it seems like it all has to get done at once. Were you how closely were you working with um, with like the writers of um, of the Dreaming City and I mean, did you have to redesign the way that your teams collaborated for this? It seems like there's a lot of departments that we're talking, or is that, is that normal in, in, at Bungie? I mean, I think it's like coordinating a, a cohesive story at this scale is one of the hardest challenges uh, because everyone's doing different things and everyone has parts of their activity that aren't working and parts like, oh, we need to scrap this, we need to change this, and I, I think uh, the writers are always downstream, like trying to catch things and wrangle things back together. Uh, what, we, what we try to do is we have a, an amazing team of writers here. Uh, we worked really close uh, with Mallory and John Toe, uh, and we tried to put some stakes in the ground really early and say, no matter what we change in this experience, you're gonna kill a forty-story tall monster at the end, of it, right? Like spoiler, just kidding. Uh, and and we knew what we had with the uh, with the experience of running out with the heart, um, and we we pretty early on were able to say like, whatever changes, we promise that won't, right? And you guys come to us and tell us uh, how the narrative is shaping up, what we can do to help. And we'll tell you about the the small changes that we're making if those impact your story. Interesting. So you guys had you were That's gonna really kill cool. Riven, the or the beast, the giant dragon, and then also bring the heart through the raid. Those were like cornerstones of like the development. Very very so, early on, uh, those two experiences, we knew we wanted to do uh, sort of what we refer to as a mega boss. Uh, I think. Uh, Selfishly, like we'd it'd been a long time since Oryx, and we're like, oh, we can do it better than Oryx, right? Like, uh, yeah. <laughs> and then after that, we knew we wanted a, an escape sequence. Uh, we wanted something that uh, felt totally different, harkened back to those Halo Three vibes of like, mm -hmm. it's a victory lap. Yep. Uh, I was just gonna uh, say that. It felt when, that, it felt like that. It's beautiful. When you guys like are designing the raid, do you guys start with the like the encounter? Like, do you guys have an idea? Okay, this would make a really encounter good encounter. We'll we'll have like this ball, and you've got to figure out like where to put the ball. <laughs> like, and you got to read these like Wait. these cryptic <laughs> signs, or like do you, and then design the arena around that, or do you have like an idea of what we want something to look like, and then make a puzzle fit it? We'll go into a meeting and. We'll come up with like a, a theme. Uh, usually it's like an emotion, uh, but it's something that kind of drives the rest of the encounters. Uh, it's something to tie everything together. Um, yeah, just to you know, perhaps say it's totally right. We, uh, we design all of our raid encounters based off of experiences. Um, so each oh, encounter has an experience statement. Uh, so like for the escape, the experience statement is carry your friends across the finish line. Like, mm -hmm. whatever we did in that encounter, we knew we wanted it to the end to feel like you were carrying your friends across the finish line. Uh, oh, so it wasn't punch your friend in the face because they keep <laughs> making you wipe. No, that's the no. vault. That's the vault. Now we need to know. We need to know the experience behind every encounter. Yes. I yeah. want to know, know what, the, what that was. It. Yeah. I think you get, you get some of them. You'll get little chunks. and can't give away all the sauce. Okay. Uh, I want to know about the vault, though. The yeah, vault just was, was the one my the vault. favorite. The vault. Uh, so vault is vault is weird. I think there are, there are two ones we talk about there. Uh, number one was uh, break inside the cage and poke the bear. Hmm. Like uh, we wanted to, we knew we wanted to build a boss, and we wanted to have it. We knew it was going to be huge, and there was going to be ways to view it all the time. And we wanted to feel like uh, you were an aggressor, and you were like getting actually inside this thing's home and like experiencing it really close. Uh, and eventually the drop sequence for us became, uh, you're an X-Wing and you're uh, going up into Star Destroyer. Like that sort of bombing run style of like, oh, we're gonna fall down right across this thing and we're gonna get all the cannons off of the Star Destroyer. 
Wow. That's really cool. That is so That's cool. That's crazy. And so somehow that comes into the encounter that we, we, we've we played or we've watched play. Um, did you, let me, let me ask you about leveling or, or difficulty. Did you intend <laughs> to go straight to hard mode? Like, I mean, did you just say, F what did we do to you? Yeah, That's like, <laughs> did, you, were you, did you like, did we insult you in some way on Reddit? I mean, no, I'm just yes, kidding. But... People will say it was too easy to level and they were over leveled. So, and we were I'm curious about like the, pro the thought process for, you know, obviously you knew that no, but that very few people were going to be 600 light, right? And if any, they, that nobody would be, it, how was your, how do you design a raid like that? And you, did you realize that so few people were going to finish the raid in um, in the first weekend? Did you were you afraid that like fifty people, fifty fifty percent of the population would finish it? Like, what were your thought yeah. process behind that? Your worries, your concerns. So I I think uh, really early on as a, a sort of a project goal, uh, one of the things. Uh, we knew we wanted in Forsaken was for your, if we were going to have a power level climb, right? If Destiny is going to be a game where you gain power levels that we wanted your power level to matter, right? Like we wanted this number that it goes up. You're like, oh, I'm so glad this number is going up. Uh, and and in sort of our last few releases, we've been in a scenario where like, okay, we're going to the raid. It's pinnacle content. And you're like, and I'm 30 line over. Right, and yeah. so you never get that feeling of like I'm so glad this number is so high, right? Right. Uh, and so Absolutely. we were really lucky uh, to get uh, a bunch of buy-in from the rest of the team, and said, "Hey, what if they win the light, and or they went to the raid, and they were 20 light under, right? Like, and and they had to do the whole raid, and they had to feel sort of like the weight of what we call the sandbox uh, portion of the encounters, which is just like." Shooting dudes, right? Uh, it's, it's destiny, right? Like it's yeah. a game about guns and aliens, and it's not just about solving puzzles. And so we want you the first time to go in there to be like these scions, right? Like they keep replicating. <laughs> yes. uh, Can confirm yes. that happens. Yes, and <laughs> I, I think uh, Tefty actually made a mention of that specific thing um, last podcast. You're like. Just before you're about to kill one, it spawns in its full health. You got another like one and another one. And when you're yeah, under light, yeah. it's just they two tap you. It's so annoying. And that that experience was completely nailed because the first time we go in, we're like, oh, it's so hard. Everything is, it hurts so bad. And then you go in again and you start feeling more powerful in mm -hmm. those encounters. And you actually experience the feeling of getting powerful, not just, yeah. oh, my number is now higher. You have that experience of power. Yeah. So, yeah. I, can, I cannot. Uh, enough thank the, the huge amount of people that aren't here like getting the tuning on the the power climb to make that happen huge amount of work we were lucky to have people like Holtzman and Mercules yep. and uh, <laughs> Spot in our back pocket that are crazy game players and we could like just play the game just play it so much until your <laughs> eyes bleed out and tell us how fast <laughs> you're doing it right and so we really were able to dial those numbers in appropriate nice. place uh, it felt. It still feels good. Yeah, it feels fantastic. Yeah. Um, I, I love the feeling of playing against Cali, and knowing that I. Well, because I already knew, but I, <laughs> I knew I could handle that. But getting to Shirochi, I was probably going to have to wait a little while. That felt good to me again. Yeah. Did you? Yeah, um, it's like you're slowly unlocking the raid for a lot of people, right? Instead of being this feeling of I want to conquer it in one shot, it's like okay, we can do Cali, and then we can go level up a bit, and then we can come mm -hmm. back. I think yeah, that feeling is also really cool that it's just ex this long experience that you can conquer. Aspirational. Yeah. Yeah, it was, that was also Yeah, really did great. you guys take some of that MMO heritage and want to, like, put it into that? So, like, the feeling of people who are kind of climbing towards that clear, that first clear for the raid? I, I think for us it's a, it's a balance, right? Like, we love the, like, the feeling that you're progressing. Uh, but at the same time, like, the day one Destiny raid event, is such a cool thing that only exists uh, for yeah. us right now. And I think we always want you to think that like the players, like the best of the best, they're going to go in there and you're going to be able to, if you want, watch them for a few hours and they'll be able to clear the raid. Uh, 
And not that you're getting to the last boss and it's like question mark, question mark, and we're just telling you, like, see you next week. <laughs> right. While right. you guys were watching the raid this time, did it start to become questionable in your mind if anybody would finish it in day one? <laughs> no. I mean, there's no? a couple teams that had it down and just had to execute. Yeah. Although we were giddy with anticipation when they found out they had another encounter. <laughs> I bet. I, I, that's I never happened. You guys it's do. never that's been right. kill the giant <laughs> boss. Oh, and then there's more. <laughs> I, I think that that's an important point that you just mentioned there. That it, it seems, it when I was watching it through the through the through the first raid race, is that the mechanic, like the the teamwork component of it, it seems like that is the point that you guys were trying to make. That 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 this these encounters required you to work as a as a, as a team and that is what you had to master. You know, yes, shooting things was important and killing the ads and knowing what to do, but it wasn't so much about that as, as each member had to know their job and be able to communicate effectively. It seems like you put on, on a pedestal mm -hmm. teamwork. And is that, was that, is, is that accurate description of, of what you were shooting for? Uh, we, one of our, you know, one of the things we really strive for is communication. We have a, a sort of pillar that echoes all of our content, and that it's, uh, we want you to be happy for each additional fire team member that you bring. Hmm. Uh, so, like it, it's amazing that you can clear the raid with two players, and you can post that video on YouTube, and we like love it. Right when we see those, We're like, oh, this is so destiny, right? Look at this awesome thing. But the important thing for us is that. If you only have two people and you have a third friend and they're like, I would like to come do the raid. You're like, yes, please. Here's a multitude of things that you could do to help us do this, right? And so I think that cascades out into a bunch of different jobs. And when we play test it, if someone's sitting in the back and they're like, I could put my yep. controller down, right? Like, hmm. you guys are doing this. You're cruising on this encounter. I'm, I'm not doing anything. Like, killing these it's ass failing. doesn't help. And they're like, all right, we need something, right? Like, yeah. why does Hops feel like he can just yeah. be tweeting right now? I've been shooting ads this entire time. Please give me a job. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you dialed that up to a thousand with this. Ribbon. Yeah, the ribbon fight. Lots of symbols. The symbols and the ribbon <laughs> fight symbols. and the shoot in the symbols eyes, so like fun. and the eyeballs. At, at any point during the development, did you guys go? This might be too much. <laughs> Yeah, do you, <laughs> I think there were a few times where we said it wasn't enough. Was our real like threat <laughs> development? Uh, what, was there a version? We're not. We're not clan redeem. <laughs> what, was there a version of Riven that's even that that was more difficult out there that you guys pruned back? Uh, I I think there was some. You know, there's always a point in tuning mm -hmm. where we're like, oh, what have we done, <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> Riven shows up, and she only shows up for, like, one tentacle slam, and if you don't get it, she's out. And you're like, oh, okay, like, <laughs> we should probably give them more time before she pieces out. Uh, there were definite <laughs> times, uh, Last Wish got played a lot internally, probably more than any yeah. of our other raids. Yep. Um, and there were definite times when we had other people and said, this, like, this isn't quite hard enough. Uh, mm -hmm. Riven's eyes used to be two vertical lines, like oh, wow. in our block out. And so it was like, mm -hmm. it wasn't that interesting of just saying like one, eight, right? And you didn't have to think about what those were because everyone could just say, say what that was. Uh, additionally, I think the, the symbol <laughs> spots, uh, you used to so be able does, to. Yeah. Like, who does, the, let's talk about those eyes. Like, the left yeah, side's yeah. all kinds it's of It's been that. so yeah, fun what, watching all the different. Right. What's your favorite, like, right. What's your favorite community um, like description of those? Because we've heard a lot of different things of people describing their ways of, of, of naming them. What was your favorite? Uh, I really, I really liked someone who did it like a die. Right. For whatever reason, on the left side, they numbered it in this very strange, like it was a five-sided die over there. And I'm just thinking, who's sending this over Discord to someone else? And the other people are like. <laughs> Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, it's crazy! And then and the, seeing the world's first teams decide yeah. on like their callouts for, I mean, do you feel bad for boring ass bird? Uh, no, I think that was. I 
two things about the symbols. Uh, we were watching, this is like deep raid history. Mm -hmm. uh, we were watching My Dad is Bungie a long time ago, and they were doing uh, War Priest, right? The first, uh, right. their world's first run at War Priest. And they, you know, they were too deep in the strategy, and at some point I think Broman goes like, we have to learn the hive language, right? The <laughs> glow <laughs> on the back of the, the and then, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we sort of just wrote that down, like maybe one time we'll make you learn a language, oh, right? Like, maybe uh, that's what please we'll do. do. Right? Like, uh, can you imagine yeah. like learn the campaign? language to describe your teammates amazing. how to do this? Yeah, and oh, so that was really, super cool. Really early on, one of our goals with the symbols was that every team had a different way of talking about them. That yeah. they weren't so obvious that you're like, that one's dog. Uh, we have a bunch of really amazing concept artists, and one of the first passes of real symbols that you see, uh, like there was a dragon with a spear, and then there's a dragon with like holding a cube. Uh, <laughs> and then we're like, no, 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 no. You can't have cube dragon and spear dragon. There are two dragons with spears, right? Like, and you have to talk about is one dead dragon or is yeah. one like oh, full man. dragon? Like, what do you want to call them? <laughs> so you, so you were, you got to a point where you were just like, let's see what mental paces we can put a raid team through, right? Because this is, you're playing, yeah. you're communicating, you're, you, you know, you have to look process think and communicate it effectively in a short period of time i mean there was a point where you guys were just like you know feeling like you're just you know. <laughs> oh yeah uh i think early on one of the first sets of symbols we had was a bunch of different flowers and like people were like daffodil hibiscus and you know, other people were like i have no idea what that flower is <laughs> botanist raid holy crap yeah <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, the, the symbols threw me off heavily initially, and then and then we started getting a rhythm, and there was like that the thing going around of what to call them specifically. And once you learned that, yeah. it worked. But it was definitely a leap. What were you gonna say? Sure. We, uh, I think that's like one of the things that we're really hoping comes about in in Rage, and that's that uh, there's a bunch of expertise that you gain, mm -hmm. and then you you have that, and it's like a power in your back pocket, like. Sure, you may have gotten a raid gun that may have bumped up your power up by five, but you may also just like have experience that like I can talk about the symbols. Uh, I can I know what the eyes are, and that experience becomes so valuable in sharing with other people, and that becomes your value to the raid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So instead of must have Gallarhorn, it's must have Dakota ring. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Must have that's, figured that's... out hive language during the nightfall strike. Yeah, it is interesting. <laughs> Must be able to decode, know at least three languages and decode. <laughs> um, it's really interesting. I, I feel like we are seeing a new evolution of Destiny raids to add, um, like you guys are putting, raising the bar on this raid and requiring teams mm -hmm. to, to, to be more, um, to work more synergistically. There's, oh, there, was there ever a point or concern where you felt like, um, you know, there's a lot of people that LFG raid, right? That put together. And is there a point where you were concerned that this raid would not be able to be accomplished by uh, a random grouping of people? Uh, I think we're lucky to have a bunch of. Uh, we pretty regularly uh, have to run people through the raid internally that uh, maybe aren't hyper regular raiders. Uh, and the thing they're always whispering in our ear is like, how am I going to do this on live, right? Like, uh, yeah. please help me. And so I think one of our goals is we always want to have one or two roles where you can be given a very basic instruction. Like, uh, I sort of go to Oryx, like, your job is to shoot the ogres. They're going to spawn, you're going to turn, and you're going to shoot them, right? And that is yes. your job. Uh, and these, then you have the Sherpa roles. And so we wanted to make sure that every fight you could have and be like, okay, yeah, you could, with pretty minimal instruction, you don't have to know what's going on with the symbols. You can just be a person who's clearing out scions. Like, that's my job. My job is to keep the scions dead. This guy's going to shoot two eyeballs. This guy's going to do some decoding that I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> right? And I'm just like on for the shooting scions, right? And your, your teammates should still be super happy that the scions are dead. Uh, 
but you don't have to, yeah, learn the awoken language to to get through it. So I, I want to I want to jump into some of the experiences because I got a chance to watch these guys trying this because I was I was at work, but I was. I mean, I was at work, so I got to see it later. I wasn't watching. <laughs> um, so, the vault, right? Yeah. Um, d- why are you? <laughs> so, it seemed difficult. Now, did you want it to be that? Like, what? What was the design? Are you talking about the security mechanism. Security yeah, mechanism. Yeah. 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 Like oh, to open the, the door to the yes. vault. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah. Oh man! Yeah. What? What? Where did that begin? Like, what? Where did you guys come up with the idea of like you have these sixteen crazy symbols and that people are going to have to antumbra penumbra this together and like slam on? How do you even figure out that antumbra yeah. is one side and penumbra is the other side? Yeah. How do well, people even figure on, that out? Early on, I think the experience statement. I mean, it, we thought of it like a breaking into a safe, right? So we thought of it as this big dial lock that you were going to break open. And once the symbols came into it, it got a lot more complicated. But uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think that's another like area where we where we learned uh, something. Our general rule of thumb is that like there's nothing we can present the bleeding edge raiders with and their hive mind of witch followers that is going to last for too long, right? Like mm-hmm. the internet is very smart; they can rapidly recommend different things. Uh, but for most of an internal, uh, you know, we're using debug strings. We know what all the things mean. And we're like, okay, yeah, we sort of, we get what's going on here. And at that moment when uh, turning the, the lock left or turning it right turns from Antumbra to Penumbra, we were like, ooh, <laughs> okay. Uh, we, think they'll, we think they'll get it. I, I will say one of the most satisfying <laughs> moments of that whole uh, day for one of our designers was when Dado holds up the pieces of paper to his camera and goes, data and conclusions. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, you're, so you guys, you guys are, you guys are designing the lock to get in and um, you're, you're, you're also cognizant of the fact that you want them, you want Raiders to the first world's first team to, to, to have to work through a problem. Right, you, you're thinking of the just not just as the raid team, but the internet as a whole, the the, the collective hive mind in trying to solve this, and and and, and it seems like that th- that concept or that theme of the, not just the individual player, but the community as a whole, played into the design elements of it, and how it affect like the Dreaming City. Because like for me, I got to see these guys finish World First, and it affected my life. Right, it affected my playing of the Dreaming City. Um, how do, how does that um, how does that player connection look for you guys between the raid team and the um, and the uh, uh, the end game team or the team that's working on the live game? Personally, I went to sleep. Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, okay. Uh, yeah, I, I think that Destiny is, has developed such its own style of community and its own style of progression. You know, I, coming from like a, an MMO World of Warcraft background, when I was doing bleeding edge stuff, the, the thought of like giving someone else your strategy or, or like streaming uh, your content or saying that you found a secret was like, totally foreign to that community, right? It's all about hoarding what you know and, like, using that power for yourself. Uh, Destiny is a totally different beast, right? Like, it, it becomes this thing, like, I found this, look at this thing I found, look at this thing for all of us to enjoy. Mm-hmm. And I think part of that is raid encounters. I think a, a big part of it is secrets. You know, when we hide secrets, we hide them with the intent that, like, millions of people are going to look for these, right? Like, yeah, I've... Every so every time someone shows me something secret in Destiny, I'm like, how would I ever like? What are you? What are you talking about? <laughs> like the wish plate on Nessus, I can remember someone showing me that and thinking, why would anyone be here? 
Yeah. Right? Like, <laughs> why, why? Would they're under a staircase? Like, in a part of the game that no one goes to anymore? But we were like, yeah, it'll probably take them a day or so. So, <laughs> that is one of the things. Like, at what point in the process of designing the raid did you guys want to put the wishes in there? Like, I obviously the thematic... The wishing wall. Yeah, the, th- the theme of the wishes makes sense, but I'm assuming... Was- from a development process, it was like, okay, we're going to have like these codes in there. Oh, that was, yeah. Uh, we got excited about that when the security mechanism was being built because of course. seeing all these dials move, <laughs> we were like, somehow they're going to enter combinations and things are going to happen. And what does that look like? And then eventually, obviously, we moved that to the front of the raid because we didn't want to make people play five sixths of the raid before they could enter a cheat code yeah and so yeah. There, so there's a lot of possibilities there there is a, a lot of... can't brute force this one yeah well, don't say no. that <laughs> so uh, there well, is a I'm lot of it, the, it my favorite go ahead, by far i mean obviously getting extra loot is great too but like my favorite favorite <laughs> is fail safe being joining the raid <sighs> and it's bittersweet because if fail safe doesn't join future raids i'm going to be really disappointed Honestly, she now needs to be in every single raid. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm really, yeah I, I think uh, we got Jill to come over and write failsafe, and she knocked out of the park. And it, yeah, it's really interesting to have that different character perspective on mm-hmm. a raid. And like, what would it be like to take someone else? Yeah, like to show no <laughs> member of the like Destiny cast what's going on in these raids. Because you know, usually it's comms off, right? Yeah, yeah. it's great. I like, think yeah. It's like uh, Wing Zero said in chat that Shax needs to join. Can you imagine Shax just yell? You get a triple kill like- on some Scions? That would be. <laughs> oh, yeah. That would be pretty high. The hype, PVE but. callouts where it's just yeah. Shax just starts yeah. going insane because you've killed like seven th- thrall. You know. <laughs> so, what I love about the wishes also is that like each raid has had like a certain set of secrets, and probably Rise Iron was the, the most technical up to that point. Leviathan, like. Right. It definitely had its its share of secrets in the um, the underbelly, but like Rise Iron was a deep secret yep. that the community had to crack. Yep. Yeah. I feel like this is definitely the next evolution. Like you have this key input to cause these certain effects that are like cheat codes. Just like I said, it's like the the game genie of the raid being able to put in there <laughs> to have these things happen. Right. Have like you know silly things that from headshots and all that and. I love it, and I, I love the fact also that there could be a bunch of crazy stuff still in there that we don't know anything about. Obviously, you guys can't say anything as to what what's there because you're bungee. You don't want to like reveal it. You want the community to find it. But like that kind of secret stuff in the raid is the things I love. I love finding chess. Yeah. But then when things like that get in there, it's just a whole nother level. Uh, I, so happy I think, to hear that. Like there was a really early on where it was like. Okay, we just did a raid that had a bunch of secret passageways between it. Like that was different than the raid where we had to find a bunch of monitors. We go to the team and say, like, what are we gonna do? Right? Like, <laughs> we gotta do something, right? And uh, luckily, we work with amazingly smart individuals that make me and him look real dumb all the time. Uh, and so, That's fair. yeah, <laughs> That's fair. fair. Uh, and they come up with cool things, and then we talk about if it's possible, and then we say, oh, we're going to do it anyway. Like, it might be possible, we're going to do it anyway. Uh, <laughs> and then it gets in the game. That's cool. So we've got a, um, we've got a few minutes left um, for this, this um, conversation before you guys got to go home to your families. Um, go home just to Saturday, any, right? Do you got to <laughs> Can you tell... <laughs> Can you tell us uh, about like any um, any memorable moments about this um, raid, or either the development process or the world's first thing, or anything that you've had where you feel like um, you knew you had something special? Because right now we're looking at a community that's reacting extremely positively. That's got to feel good, right? You've got. Uh, I just read an amazing article from Polygon. There's um, Right. There's all these reviews of people that are putting out, this is the best raid that's happened. That's got to mm-hmm. feel good. D- did you know you had lightning in a bottle um, when you were shipping this? Or is this, um, you know, or do you feel like that now? I mean, how, where do you stand with as, as uh, raid developers with this? 
you gotta go first. Sure. Yeah, I mean, Joe had just tweeted that Polygon article, and and I commented that, like, when we were initially making this raid um, and talking about what we wanted it to do that was special, the big thing was like, this is the greatest hits of raids, and reading that article where. The writer literally put, like, it's the marrying of all the best parts of all the raids. It was like, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I think I still get real nervous uh, as things go out there. You know, even we talk about this being like one of the most play tested raids internally, uh, and that's definitely true, but it's a totally different ball game, you know, when the numbers go up from, oh, maybe we've cleared it about 100 times within Bungie's wall. So, you know, Week one, they're being oh, there's they've done it 500 times. Week two, they've done it 10,000 times, <laughs> right? Like those those numbers and those attempts on all that content become so much higher, and it it just takes a couple weird things to fall out for the whole experience to fall down. So I get I still get super nervous, mm -hmm. or I get like maybe maybe they're not gonna like this way like we like this. Yeah, super nervous. I think about Churro Chi when. You know, she moves up the tower, and you can only kill her at the last spot. And we were pretty adamant that, like, this fight isn't cool unless you kill her at the top of the tower. Like, that's what the, the fight is about. It's about like, right. climbing to the top of the tower. And at the same time, all throughout development, we're hearing things about, like, uh, Davix and the strike. Like, there's so many immune phases. Right. Or, like, it's a long oh, fight. Okay, well... We're putting a lot of them. <laughs> she goes immune a lot of times in this encounter. How can we make that not be awful, right? And like we, we tried really hard, and we're like, we think we've done it. That even after you push her, like you feel like, okay, well, we can get to the next DPS as fast as we can move. But we don't really know what other people are going to think about that, right? And are they still going to be like, I should be able to kill her at the first plate? Like, oh, maybe you should have been able to kill at the first plate. <laughs> <laughs> You know what though? Like that fight is fun because you are doing the puzzles after each part. Like having to do Dance Dance Revolution in that room is like, mm. it's cool. Like it feels like the puzzle that you're solving and it's not just DPSing a boss. I like that movement right. aspect of it too. It's just like, it almost feels like a race, yeah. like to get to the exactly. next DPS and yeah. get through it. It's, it's fun. Yeah. Yeah. That so was a unique I, challenge too. Uh, uh, an encounter that covered a lot of ground. Mm-hmm. So cool. Well, I, I wanted to I wanted to personally thank you two um, for um, coming on. I know that you guys um, have uh, are extremely proud of what you've put out, and you're already working on the new stuff. And um, so you're going to leak all the secrets right now, right? Right? You're going to tell us all the stuff that yep. you're yes. working on. Yeah. This is the yep. next. Right when this is over. Right? Spoilers from here on out. This is no, I'm just kidding. Um, Give me the code. I'm really excited. I'm really excited with um, with the where Forsaken is, and um, I know we have more secrets to unravel. Um, I just wanted to, from I know speaking from the podcast team and our community, wanted to personally thank you for the work you guys have put in. You were doing it at a time when um, there was a lot of chatter in the community of um, there was a lot of outside people saying that. Destiny was bad, right? And it's, you guys played a huge role in bringing back the game that we love. And um, I just wanted to thank you that for that. And I Yeah, you're talking to you. the whole team right now. I'm talking to <laughs> yeah. the whole team, not Absolutely. just you two. I, I, yeah. I know that there is hundreds of employees at Destiny and I, and I hope at Bungie, and I want every one of them to know that we, I personally, and I know this team does, personally appreciates the crazy, hours and the creativeness that you guys put into making the game that we love. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. I agree. Yep. All right, guys. Um, cool. Thanks so much for having us. Thanks for, thank you for coming yeah, on. Thanks for, yeah. we're going to, we're going to hang up with you and, and bash uh, the game for another hour. Good. Good. Right. Good. <laughs> love it. Yeah. We're about to get super toxic up in here. <laughs> yeah. We're going to tear this down, <laughs> but thank you. Thank you very much. All right, Scott, cut us off. All right, later, guys. <laughs> Bye. See thank you. Thanks for coming Bye. on, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. Hot mics. Hot mic. Oh, hot, hot, hot <laughs> mic. Okay, they're muted. That's always great having like the guys who create the experience that we enjoy so much. Like having them talk about mm -hmm. the creation process. It's inspiring, really. It's like it really, it's really yep. it adds so much context to to what you see on a daily mm -hmm. basis.
There was yeah. a ton of questions, Briar, that we had um, from the community that asked things that just, you know, were not necessarily, where they were not appropriate for these these two guys, right? There were and a ton I, of those. Yeah. And I just want to make sure that everybody knows that that's listening, that these guys are designers, they're, they're, they're artists, they're, um, you know, they're not going to be able to answer some of the questions that, that people yeah. had. There's I was, yeah. I was, hundreds of people that work on the game. <laughs> yeah, those yeah, questions right. are complex. And I want to keep an open environment for more developers that um, more designers, more artists to come on to the show and feel comfortable and feel welcome and be able to share their experiences and the art of making games. And so I really, truly appreciate them. It's a, it's it's hard to come on here and be on on a live show and uh, right. um, and be able to feel like you're on a firing line. And I feel like, uh, you know, this community yeah. is the right place for, for them to be able to share their. Yeah. And also uh, we'd like to start roasting people. So yeah, if we could roast <laughs> right. some of them as well, they, they are not going to know. We're, we're drawing them in. We're being all nice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Next yes. One, we're really going to hit them with that hard <laughs> <Yeah>. shit. <laughs> oh, man. Thanks. Briar. It's going to be, but Thank watch you. out. <laughs> it's so cool. It's so cool getting to see perspective on like the development of stuff like that because it's just inspiring. Yeah. yeah, it's amazing. I would love to be able to speak to every team that's a part of creating this game and just you know the world art. Where does that start? Like, how do you? We we're looking at Forsaken, and yeah. it's such a huge thing. Tangled Shore, Dreaming City. We've got the dungeon is massive. The raid is yeah, massive. We didn't even like, ask about the dungeon today. The the music, but the art, mm -hmm. the, it's just the lore, and my goal yeah. is to what have an open sure? open mic, like and, and invite as much of them uh, to come on and share their experiences. Um, I know um, Hops was recently at a you know he did a, a panel discussion um, with uh, with uh, Steve Cotton, and it was a great um, it was a great interview, a great opportunity for them to engage with a with a huge the game developer conference, but I, I really want them to be able to speak to us um, in the community mm -hmm. and, and um, create an environment where they can do that. We forgot. Yeah. What did we forget? We forgot to ask if they're, which class the rocking man? Oh, <laughs> oh. they're drinking snake. No, oh. but the, cl the we need to, we, did we need to know. There's three questions. If they class, inherently drink, do snake. not like warlocks as much as we don't like warlocks. What's it seems point? to be the case. I don't know if you guys have tried that jumping puzzle on Warlock. Yeah. <laughs> we, did, we should have asked, talked about that. Uh, it's only so much time in an we hour. Man. Why do you hate Warlocks? <laughs> Warlocks. <laughs> what do you got against Warlocks? Oh, there are man. there are fine dressed friends. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't ask them also the very important question. All the things that they could do in their life that only takes two minutes. <laughs> right, that's that should be it. That should be a, an ongoing question on our podcast from now on. What can you accomplish in two minutes? And I, just I don't understand the context of that question. Not well, beating I a mean, raid, right? Sometimes yeah. two oh, minutes. Oh my bad. <laughs> sometimes two minutes is the difference between getting rewarded. And that, and I thought that. we were done with the two minute jokes after. No. Oh, no, no, it doesn't, it doesn't look show. to be the case. Oh, doesn't no. look no. to be the case. We're gonna keep two going. Minutes. Two, minutes. two minutes too late, like. It is now. Is it a same? <laughs> is it? It's I now. think it is, right? Like a long... Isn't it? I, I could have like, sworn it yeah, is. Yeah, I feel like two minutes too late is kind of like minutes, a... You know, let's Google it. Yeah, it's two minutes too Hopefully late. Hopefully Dado and... doesn't come up when I Google this. I, just... I know that we've been... <laughs> we're running pretty late here, but you guys want to do a, a, just a couple let's of do dumb a couple. questions? Let's do a couple of questions. Yeah. Let's, a couple let's, of let's, dumb let's, let's do some ones. dumb stuff. All right. Um. Oh, I lost my place in my page. Hold on. Jets nailed it. It's an Alanis Morissette lyric. The ironic side. Yeah, it's the thing. It's ironic. It's yeah, isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, Silver Moose Gaming says, "If you could make one wish to Riven, what would it be?" Whew. Mm. One wish to um, Riven. One wish to Riven. Um, I kind of just want to sit down and have a conversation with Riven, find out like how did you get taken? You know, what's your actual form? Seeing as Ahamkar can change their form, how do you like to present yourself? You know, is this your ideal? Form or do you like being, uh, you know, like pretty lady sometimes? The wait, 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 yeah, what's what is the plus? Do you have boils? 
Hmm? No, where, where are you having this conversation? Do you foresee, like, is this like a coffee shop? I'm wishing shop? for are a conversation with Riven in a coffee yeah, like, shop. Yeah, that sounds great. Shop coffee shop couch, sounds amazing. A latte out. Riven's like sitting there oh, waxing <laughs> poetic, right? No. Breathing fire. All right, cool. I just, I wish to have a conversation with Riven. Why do you have boils and why do we pop them? Why does it hurt so much? Are they yeah. painful already? Yeah. I not many questions. So many. Hmm. Huh. All right. Um, I I'd really like to. I'd really like to have a better understanding. I want to go to who's the original Taken. Hmm. The first. Mm, that's your the wish. First taken? The first. I want to. <laughs> I want to meet the first Taken that took. The got took. The got Oryx. No. And it's not Oryx. No, no, no. It's. It, we're gonna have. To, we're gonna have Bife on next week. And I'm going to have oh, him prepared. Oh, he needs to tell us everything. Yeah. Yeah. This is gonna we be have so time. many questions. This is just going to be us listening to back tell stories. It's literally. And then like, oh, <laughs> so like what about tell this us? thing? Okay, what about you. this? What about, you <laughs> can right. ask your Boyle's question. I'm sure he'll know the answer. All right. Since, okay, since I've got an actual wish that I would ask <laughs> Riven yeah, for. Hit me, hit me with something actual. I would ask Riven to give my hunter blink back. Mm. That's my uh, wish. Can Riven do that? Riven? Probably. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Riven yeah, can grant wishes. Yeah, you're right. She, of course, she'd give my hundred points back. All right, I, I've got, I've got one. Riven, I would ask Riven to allow me to cross save. Mm. Yours is better. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna go with seventeen trillion dollars. <laughs> <laughs> What's it with you? You really want Lamborghini, Lamborghini Race cars. Track yeah. Saturdays, man? Come on, Lamborghini man! Lamborghini Race. Can we make that a song? Can DCP make the Lamborghini Race Track song? We should. I'll make look that into it. Oh, make that's an crazy. Yeah, well, Destiny Lamborghini Lore sounds great. Race track. But Lamborghini, Lamborghini Race Tracks, race track. seventeen trillion dollars. <laughs> seventeen trillion dollars. As a scientific number, I came with, up with that after much thought. Okay. <laughs> uh, Hurricane Ken says, hey, everyone, how's it going? Question, do you have a good luck charm? Do you have something that makes you play better or makes the experience more enjoyable? Yes. I like to hold my three-month-old <laughs> daughter when playing Crucible because I have to stay calm so I don't wake her. Mm. <laughs> hey, three-month-old daughter. I am, wow. I am unfortunately <laughs> very superstitious. I hope that three-month-old daughter keeps giving out the good luck. I fear. <laughs> I fear. <laughs> Get on so a losing there, streak, and all of a sudden we're looking at that daughter thing. And <laughs> there are a few things that I have to have in my wallet that I feel are good luck charms. Well, we need to listen to this because Pope has the good RNG, so he true. might be on to something. Yeah, it's this an, is it's, true. It's a, it, mm, the, these notes. are very important things. Mm -hmm. I have a, I must have a picture of my family. Okay. okay. I'm going to get a picture of your family. <laughs> okay. <laughs> of your family, <laughs> not my family. <laughs> My That's wife, my lovely wife. I already got that. I already got a picture right. of Pope's wife. <laughs> no, you got, you got it. <laughs> um, this this was blessed by the Pope. Oh, I don't think I have okay. that. I could probably oh. buy it on Amazon. It's probably yeah, on Amazon. eBay, right? Oh, I enough. could definitely get a fake yeah, one. Yeah. I don't know if I could get a real one. <laughs> All right. And this it's $2, literally Pope RNG. Two dollar bill. This two dollar I mean, bill was no. um, originally put in my grandfather's wallet when I was born. Two dollar bill. In 1977, oh, from Pope's he, wallet. he put a $2 bill in his wallet, and then right before he passed away, he gave it to me, and it's been in my wallet ever since. And so oh, this gosh. is an extremely important $2 bill, and it always goes with me. So those are my three items. How much for the $2 bill? You couldn't pay me. <laughs> How much? Enough. $17 There's no dollar amount. $17 trillion? <laughs> No. There's always a number, Pope. <laughs> Decent proposal. <laughs> no, this the, that's that's I, I'm superstitious. I I, I, have good, I believe in good luck charms. And um, um, yeah. I mean, I think we cracked it. The, the Pope literally blessed your RNG. Yeah, yeah. That I one, think we I just mean, have to go to the Pope. The I think pictures of your family are really nice, but you've literally <laughs> got the Pope's blessing. Yeah, you got Pope blessed. <laughs> My mom went to Italy. My mom went. To, I am named after the the Pope. So um, a, a Pope. it. A Pope. And, um, <laughs> and, um, and so she had this when um, blessed by him, the Pope that I'm named after. And, um, um, and then that's, that's been in my wallet ever since. It's been in there a long time, at least 25 years. So we need to have a DCP trip to Italy to get mm. Mm. Yes. Yeah, I like blessed it. by the Pope. Italy meetup. 
at the Vatican. <laughs> we can all get Pope RNG. <laughs> yeah, oh, this man. sounds great. Dude, the food is going to be awesome. It's going to be the best meat I've ever. <laughs> Find the meatball. It, it's 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 important. <laughs> it's it's all of this stuff is linked, and I'm not going to get all too weird on this, but you know how you live your life, like you know what you do. It's all karma. It's all linked, and people call it like you know, RNG, Pope Luck or whatever. I think that if you live a good life and you're good to people, good things happen to you. So we're all bad people? I don't know. Briar's a really bad person. Mm. Briar's <laughs> RNG was awful. That's true. <laughs> yeah, man. I am a bad person. Pope, although I got to say, you once explained Pope RNG to me and you said, it's nothing special. I just play more than anybody else. <laughs> This was back in Destiny One. You were in different yeah. situations. It's oh man, that was no life in Destiny One for sure. That's where I. <laughs> that's the truth of it is that I played so ridiculously. You know, for every God roll, uh, um, thousand yard stare I threw at in Patrick's face, I had grinded fifteen more that were crap. Yeah. So hmm. it was. Um, it's fun. That's Watch, Steph, do you get any uh, good luck charms? Uh, absolutely not. <laughs> no, yeah. no. Might explain a lot. I'm just really bad luck in general. Don't ever let me order food for you because no matter what, it will come messed up or missing or something. <laughs> Every single time. I can order online where I'm just selecting from a drop-down menu on their website and they will still mess it up. Wow. I don't know what I did. Yeah. I did something bad. That's rough. I, I have yeah. bad RNG and no good luck charms. <laughs> I got so. decent RNG, but I don't have a good luck charm specifically. Yeah. Hmm. Zabe says, "All right, this one's a little bit of a story, and it's written a little weird. So try and stay with me." Okay. Oh boy. Okay. Focusing. Close your eyes. Deej interrupts, okay. holds a handkerchief up to his face, only to reveal he is Centauri from the last Starfighter movie. You guys remember the last Starfighter movie? <laughs> yeah. So maybe a little. Not really. A little too old. Yeah. So the rest of it isn't going to make any sense. So I'm <laughs> we, move it's on. already over. It's already <laughs> over. Says, what activity is socially acceptable but actually borderline psychotic? What activity? Socially acceptable but borderline psychotic. I gotta, right. I'm got i going to go road rage right off the bat. People okay. like brag about their road rage. You know, like, oh, my God, I got so mad. I, I like, you know, this this woman didn't use her blinker. So I, you know, I laid on my horn for 15 minutes behind her. <laughs> like, that's fucking crazy. You need to get your head checked. <laughs> Here, I'm, I'm going to flip that one just a, for a little bit. So how good is it to be schizophrenic in, the, in today's day and age with cell phones and those little earpieces? I mean, literally, you can walk around with these little earbuds talking to yourself, and everybody assumes that you're on a call, right? I don't think it's good still, though. <laughs> no, but there's these people who walk around <laughs> and they're just like, blah, 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 blah. I mean, Maybe it's you gotta get called be... out on it less, but still not an enjoyable no. experience overall. Nobody, it's so acceptable now. Like, people do it in the in, in everywhere they go, and I just, you know, I mean, it's I'm... Fucked, though, because Pope is, you know what has happened is, I've found is that there's less, there's less human interaction between people, because everybody's, like, it, I remember like going to a bar and you'd have a conversation with the people you went to the bar with. You talk, you'd start talking to the people like next to you at the bar. And you know, but if you stay the entire night at the bar, you'd meet like 15 different people. Now everybody is looking down at their phones. You know, it's, it, it's such this is why everyone has more social anxiety. Everybody is so hyper focused <laughs> on like their, ex you know, their phone and maybe like their earphones when they're in public, you know, everybody's wearing headphones now. Like everybody's so involved in just their own life that it, it's there's less like kind of interaction going on around you and like hmm. I don't know it's a it's not something I've put a lot of thought into so I can't explain it well but it's, it's something I've noticed definitely. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. I think honestly, we think we probably do a lot of things that is pretty messed up. You know, we're destroying our oceans. That's probably not great. Yeah, we're definitely wrecking our planet. Yeah, that's socially unacceptable. Yeah, that's probably a little, <laughs> little, little psychopathic, but acceptable yeah. by the public. Yeah. Now I'm sad. Continue. <laughs> wah, wah. I thought we were going to do <laughs> funny ones, Briar. Now all right, like most all interesting this ingredient is says, what weird chemical scent do you like? Chemical yes. scent? Oh. 
That was his too. Gas. He likes gas. I like I love gas. The smell of gas. Mm. As a kid, I used to stick my hat out the window, and my mom would fill up the tank. Really? Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> I I like the smell of um, this cleaning product, like pine salt. Oh, that's not bad. I like. I can't the... stand ammonia though. Like ammonia, I gotta like leave mm. the room. Mm. Yeah, gas definitely. I like the, I like the smell of gas. I also like Nyquil. I love the taste of Nyquil and the smell. Mm. What? Mm. Yeah, but that's kind of licorice. Like if you like licorice, you're gonna like Nyquil. No, it's I ass. Like licorice. No, it's delicious. If I so get I like sick licorice. and I have Tefty to take some Nyquil. Ass. I am all about taking the NyQuil. Hefty secretly there, like, woohoo. I am enjoying <laughs> that cup of NyQuil. I got sick. <laughs> I'm sick. Hell yeah. Oh, my God. How do you like the taste of that? It makes me nauseous. I have to, like, sit there and, like, I sit there with the cup, like, shaking. And I'm like. Do you like vinegar? Do I like vinegar? Yeah. Um, what kind of vinegar? I like uh, balsamic vinegar. Like vinegar in general. Like, for me, I, I no. can't stand vinegar. When I smell the vinegar, I want to throw up. But when it comes to NyQuil, I'm like, damn, this is good. So I have a story of like so I have heard a ton of people. I've heard this question asked before, and I've heard a ton of people say that they really love the smell of China medicine. What's I'm that? not drinking Nyquil on the side. Or on yeah, you places. are. The slur. It's you're, you're once in a long time slur. if I'm feeling something and I need to like you know need to need to sleep that is easy. Comment of the night right there. The moonshine of medicine. <laughs> it's delicious, uh, man. I. Can't help it. Have you heard people say that they love the smell of uh, cut grass? Yeah. Fresh yeah. cut grass. To me, it makes me like projectile. I vomit. I like it makes me nauseous. Like I, I smell it and I go and, I, and my stomach starts flip flop and I feel like I'm uh, um, I'm like seasick almost like immediately. Dude, cut it's grass? the craziest thing. Yeah. Cut grass. Cut grass Crazy. will hit me in a way that I get like. Oh, like nauseous. Like I'm gonna I wanna puke. Huh. huh. Interesting. It's not a chemical smell. But it's... you know when you're like driving past a farm and there's like that faint smell of like cow manure? Mm-hmm. I find that somewhat agreeable. <laughs> <laughs> well, I bet it's what? because Briar finds it quaint. He's like, Oh, I'm in a quaint village. Quaint, quaint cow patties. Okay, so... cow <laughs> like look, if it's like like if, if it's overwhelming, if it's like real strong, then it gets bad. But if you're just like driving no. past a farm or something, and you you know like it's part of the the bouquet, oh, okay. <laughs> the bouquet. bloom, Briar. <laughs> Briar, when you, next time you come and visit, we are going to take a drive down the five because mm-hmm. flanked five. on between between Bakersfield it's, and 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 L.A. But if you're talking about like a slaughterhouse or something, it's like <laughs> millions of cows with shit yes, all over it. Yeah. And you will uh, never think of the smell again. It's a, Harris, I'm talking driving by like a scenic pasture and there's like six cows in there and you get like a little it bit It doesn't of happen in California. It doesn't. There's feedlots well, of millions of cows. A lot of avocados you got to fertilize down there. So, yeah. No, they're all coming from Mexico. They they don't We don't make any money on avocados anymore. No. Nope. The avocado business dried up? It just doesn't it's make any bad. money. Yeah, my brother had to uh, cut all this down because he couldn't make any money off of them. Jeff McLean says, you woke up to find you're the last person on Earth. Strangely enough, all the electrical, water, internet, utilities, everything still works. Right? <laughs> it's like a magic apocalypse. Mm, it's like a Stephen King <laughs> book. How will you spend the rest of your days? Do whatever the hell I want, right? Can go bowling by myself. Just drinking bowl, bowl on. Drinking Nyquil. Go watch some movies. <laughs> drinking Nyquil. <laughs> drinking Nyquil and driving Lambos. First thing I <laughs> do. Don't really aggressive. And aggressive smelling cow drunk driving. <laughs> smelling cow patties. <laughs> I go butt ass naked everywhere I go. Oh yeah, that's the end of clothing. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're done. Definitely. Like, that's done. Done. Yeah. Like uh, I'm walking down the street the wrong way, butt ass naked. Right. Whatever I want. So your your food quality is going to get worse and worse, right? As the yeah, apocalypse. Yeah, that sounds pretty right? bad. At first, you're mm-hmm. going to have all like the kind of food that's out there, but that shit is going to rot relatively soon. And suddenly, you're going to have to like figure out like you still got electric electricity and water and everything, so you can become like a farmer pretty easily. Mm-hmm. You got to figure this shit out in a hurry. So yeah, you, to be honest, you, I think you can become a farmer. <laughs> yeah, you got to get good quick, honestly. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. That is I don't true. think you worry about that, Tefty, because oh, you worry I think about you getting anticipate. Good. No, 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 no. I think you are figuring that by the time 
you're off of the canned foods and spam because this is remember there's everybody there right everybody in the world has died so there's all this food canned food and whatever right yeah so you can still what's eat the off shelf spam. life on that stuff spam forever it never it dies is? yeah absolutely i don't want to eat spam now i mean like just regular twinkies so you're just gonna eat shit for the rest of your life yes so it's gonna be a short life <laughs> it's a, you're, i'm going down quick <laughs> Whatever I got, as, as much trash as possible. I'm eating 15 Twinkies a day. I'm I'm dying of heart disease. I'm I mean, doing... the longer it lasts in a can, probably has a direct relationship to how shitty it is for you. <laughs> I'm not lasting that long. I'm I'm going down quick. Yeah. <laughs> Spam and Nyquil. Pope okay. Bear, fast and naked. <laughs> 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 you guys are heading uh, out of the park tonight, Twitch chat. <laughs> I'm, really, I'm really, I'm uh, really, I'm really excited. I'm really happy that I got a chance to to make it on the show. Thanks for, uh, thanks for holding. Yeah, yeah of course. It. it was a great episode. Uh, I think that's gonna this do it, right? Fun. I think so. I think yeah. that's it. All right. Well, I'm Tefty Teft. <laughs> you can talk to me at Teft on Twitter. Uh, catch my streams twitch.tv forward slash Tefty Teft. And yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm Briar Rabbit. You can uh, talk to me over at the at the Briar Rabbit on Twitter. Uh, I stream every afternoon at one o'clock, assuming my internet is working. I've had four cable guys come this week. Four, four different appointments. You believe that's that? Bad. That's rough, man. <laughs> I'm thinking about just like sending telegrams <laughs> to YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> I'm mail my videos in. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> I am uh, Miss Five Thousand Watts. You can find me on Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube. Just look for Miss Five Thousand Watts. And this has been Pope Bear. You can find me on Twitter at Pope Bear. And make sure to follow our podcast. It's at DCP underscore Live. Uh, we tweet about um, the show and um, any relevant news that's going on. So make sure to hit that uh, follow and notification button. You. Uh, you won't regret it. Next week, we have uh, Bife coming on the show. He's going to be breaking down the lore. We are really excited. He's coming off some really um, cool things uh, uh, where he's been working with... Um, who did he... He just recently did a raid run with um, um, Tiggs, right? And, and, and Giggs, I'm sorry. <laughs> I like Tiggs, though. Good. Tiggs, Tiggs is pretty good. Tigger. Tiggs, he reminds yeah. me of Tigger. That's why... I, I, it's one of my co-hosts on CDP. <laughs> Tiggs. I am dyslexic, so don't give me that. No, uh, Giggs, he's, he's, he was going to do a raid run, and I'm really excited about that. I want to hear about um, his the lore that he's putting together for um, the podcast. <laughs> right. And uh, um, we got a really great set of hosts for uh, October. Um, I, I'm, I'm not ready to announce him yet, but one of the guests will be um, Dylan from um, DMG. So one of the community um, uh, managers. Wait, is DMG like a group? Like Jethro Tull? Mm-hmm. He is. Huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, um, Aztec Cross Gaming. And um, oh, cool. we had a couple other cool um, content creators that I'm really excited about the work they've been doing. It's the second crop, the second wave of content creators that are making Destiny content. So we're really excited to highlight them. And um, yeah, so I also want to do a huge shout out to our patrons that support us every month. Um, You guys are amazing and um, we really appreciate you. We hope you're enjoying the um, pre-show chat. So if you're a member of Patreon, you can get access to the pre-show chat before we go live, as well as a a bunch of other cool um, perks in the DCP Discord. So, and a huge shout out to our Twitch subscribers and... uh, you guys help fund this whole thing and make it happen. So love you guys. Yep. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, we're going to roll credits. Thank you. And then we will be back to read out subs live. Thanks for or watching. Or will we? Or will we? Maybe we won't. Maybe we'll just disappear. Find out in about a minute and a half. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>